comments up and get your input on the uh, the team selection. Uh, let's have a look. Okay, that's never happened before. One moment. Um, okay, team news while I'm sorting that out. So it's the hair in goal, as you can see. Herrera is playing, uh, which is fantastic. We've also got Martial, Rashford, Mata, Herrera, Pogba, Schneidlin. Um, but Ro Rojo is at left back. Smalling and Bayi. Darmian at right back and De Gea in goal. In some ways, you could argue that this is actually a more exciting lineup than we've been playing for the first few weeks of the season. But uh, maybe, maybe that's a little bit unfair. But get comments in and give us your thoughts on the, the lineup and, and what you think about it. Um, Memphis deserves a chance, says Nathan. He is not in the team. Uh, he's on the bench, which, as you can see, subs to follow. Um, but I'm happy with that lineup. I think it's uh, it's great. We, we're talking about the fringe. Um, I haven't got much of the fringe, but Manchester United have got a very big fringe with very good talented players in it, so I'm happy with that. Great lineup, Mark says Mark Woods. Totally agree with you, mate. I think it's really exciting. Really, really looking forward to the game now. Uh, not that I wasn't before, but um, it is uh, it is the sort of lineup we want to see. We want to see that fringe. We want to see the likes of Schneidlin. We want to see Herrera building on it. I think Pogba playing is a real positive because we want Pogba to play and get some match fitness, which I really do think he is lacking. So, yeah, really, really pleased about it. Right, live comments is going to boom up on your screen now, which is great. Super, you're part of the show. Welcome, everything sorted out. So yeah, really, really happy with that team, as you can see below. The airing goal, Valencia at right back. Mate, it's not Valencia at right back. That team that I've got flashing up is bloody wrong. What's going on? What's going on? That is not the team. Ah, oh, that is so disappointing because it isn't the team. The team is the one I read out. which I think seems to have disappeared. So I'm going to have to rewrite that team for you. How how, how disappointing that is. Uh, give men since the game, says Daniel. Yeah, definitely agree with that. Um, very important that we are giving these fringe players uh, something to talk about and something for us to talk about as well. Um, that is the right team. So I think maybe we've just got one player that's wrong. Let me have a look. Herrera. Schneidlin, Blind, Rojo. It's not Darmian. It's Darmian at right back. That's where we've gone wrong. Apologies. Sorting it out right now. We can all sleep easily now. So the team going through there is correct now. De Gea in goal. Darmian at right back. Smalling and Bay centre backs. Really excited to see that. Rojo, not so excited to see him. Skin more times than a banana. Schneidlin anchoring the midfield. A lot of people want to see that over Fellaini. Big opportunity. Herrera, Pogba. Dynamic midfield. Very quick. No Rooney, no Fellaini. Mata, I'll probably play on the right. Martial on the left. Rashford up front. And subs to follow, which we already know the subs. They are Romero. They are uh, Memphis. They are um, Zlatan's on the bench as well. Fellaini's on the bench, Carrick's on the bench, and I think Valencia's on the bench as well, which we'll sort out. Um, Carlos, I'm watching the United Stand and doing my homework at the same time, says X Predator 7 very good idea. Mark, you're on time, pal, says Mad Marcus. Yes, we are on time. Hopefully the live comments is working. If you swap, Rashford, hopefully we've got Dan coming in as well now. Everything going off, which means that hopefully I can sort out my... Uh, um... Hello, Dan, can you hear me? Yes, mate, can, I, can you hear me? Yeah, a bit, bit stuttery, Hello? but uh, I think we've got you. All right. Hang on. Let me just make sure I've got the right mic on. Yeah, it should be. It should be all right. No, Does I think it's just the connection. Yeah, we can hear you. Uh, just, I'm having problems seeing you on the screen for the for the viewer at the moment, but I've got you now. Yeah, thoughts on the lineup, mate? Have I you seen the lineup? Great. I haven't seen it, mate. I was literally rushing to jump on. No worries, Mark. Ask me. Yep, it's De Gea in goal, Darmian right back. Rojo left back, Smalling and Bay centre backs, Schneidlin, Herrera, and Pogba in the midfield, Matter on the right, Martial on the left, and Rashford up front. I was just saying, personally, I think it's probably more exciting than, apart from Zlatan not being in there, it's probably the sort of team I wish we were playing every week. Yeah, I mean, that sounds good. Uh, I'm a bit worried about straight away off the cuff, uh, Rojo. I don't really tr I trust him with anything, to be fair. Um, and. Did you not say Memphis? So Memphis isn't in the squad either, no? He's on the bench. He's on the bench. So, yeah, I'm going to sort the bench out so, while you're talking, actually. So that, that that's the thing to me. I'm quite concerned about that because obviously we didn't see much of Memphis in the preseason. We haven't seen anything of him at all this season. I thought this may be a game that, that he'd be starting. 
Um, good to see Martial back in the team. I'd like, you know what? I'd like to see Memphis uh, tried out on the right hand side. I know he's predominantly left left midfield, but I'd like to see him on the right hand side. Um, but it, you know what? It's a it's exciting. It's an exciting team. I'll, be, I'll give you that. Yeah, it's it's, it's interesting that. Um... The, uh, I mean, what's your thoughts on Smalling and Bay? I mean, that's quite exciting, I suppose. For it is exciting. It's exciting as well because, you know, I've got, I've got a blind top there, you can probably see. I know, you know, Blind's not an out-and-out centre-back. And for me, I think we're both in agreement on this. Uh, Blind's he's a great utility man, great option for backup. But it's good to see, you know, our first, well, our first two... Uh, first choice centre backs playing together for the first time, so that's quite ex- exciting. They're both quite fast. They're both quite athletic. Um, yeah, I've, it's quite exciting. As again, the only thing that sort of slightly concerning is um, is Rojo at, at left back. You said Darmian is playing at right back, yeah? Yeah, Darmian's at right back. I've just actually put the subs up on the screen for everybody now at home. So subs to follow. Um, I thought I'd put them up. I better put them in the wrong place again because I'm having a bloody nightmare with this uh, tonight. But uh, let me have a look. Yeah, I'll put them on the wrong one. I'll uh, Fozu Menza is a sub with Romero, Carrick, Fellaini, uh, Young, Memphis, and Zlatan. Oh, um, that's better. So Zlatan's on, Zlatan's on the. I think what what I like is that Jose actually has. I wouldn't say he's listened to the fans because he doesn't need to listen to the fans, but he is playing those sub uh, those uh, those uh, fringe players, as I keep saying, and uh, that's that's a good thing. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and again, he's going back to what he's been saying over the last few weeks, where he says, "You know, I can't wait for September. I can't wait for September for this very reason." So, you know what? I'm very. Um, I'm pleased with this team. There's a few, as I said, I sound like a broken record, but there's a few things I'm a few I'm a bit bothered about. But other than that, I'm pretty happy with this. I'm quite confident that we we'll go out there um, with a pacey attacking team. Yeah, a few people just asking about the background. Obviously, we've changed the background. Uh, for those of people who don't know, uh, we've parted ways uh, with Drawty Devil. He's he's got to do different things. So just wanted to say thank you for everything he's done over the last year. A big part of the United Stand. If we can win the Football Blogging Awards, uh, then obviously he'll be a part of that in November. But uh, wish him all the best. But uh, it would be wrong to be using his designs and stuff like that. So we're all going in a different direction. So we wish him all the best. On to the next thing. Rage Reviews. Why can't you United fans? Why can't you United fans? So who do you support Rage Reviews? Except Memphis is done, big capital letters. He's a write-off. Just accept it and move on. Don't want him anywhere near the team. So he's saying you United fans, but then he must be a United fan. Um, A bit bit harsh is that, Dan? I think uh, he's got to wait for his opportunity. I think it's very harsh. I think it's very harsh. You know, I I back him to succeed. I mean, he has a lot of potential and... um, my only sort of out, my sort of excuse for him is is LVG. And now, as you see, a lot of players didn't perform last season under LVG. Um, and and you know, you can say what you want about Memphis. The longer short is he hasn't been given the opportunity this season to be under Mourinho. So until he does, you know what I mean? Give him a, just give him a chance. You know, give him a chance. These same people that won't back Memphis are the same people going back Rooney week in week out. So. For me, it swings around about give the key to a chance for me. If Fellaini comes on and scores, everyone will be on the Fellaini, uh, no, sorry, not Fellaini, Memphis bandwagon again. So uh, we've exactly. seen it. Everyone, so, everyone hated Fellaini before the season and now everyone loves him again, apart from me and, and probably you, Dan. But uh, Abid Abid is putting big capital letters, no blind, Mark, I think. Um, I wanted to get into that. No blind, not even on the bench. He's part of the squad. I, I would err on the caution that he's probably being rested like Rooney, but I think a lot of people feel that, um, or some people certainly feel, they had a bad game on Saturday and may have been dropped. But I don't know. I think Smalling was always going to play in this game, to be honest. And I just think he's being dropped. Do you think there's anything in that? What's that, sorry? Blind's not even in the squad. There's nothing in it. It's, no, he's played, well, he's played all week. Like... There's nothing. In it. There's nothing in it at all. At the end of the day, it's down. It's, it's simply down to. Uh, I wouldn't be surprised if he's back in at the weekend. It's, it's nothing in it. He's having a rest. Simple as that. Yeah. Well, we know for a fact um, that obviously Rooney has been rested. Um, agree with that, Dan? Or do you think? Um, yeah. Any thoughts well, about that? I mean, he's not being dropped. He has been rested. I'm, I'm not going to sensationalise well, you know, it. 
you know what you know what my thoughts are about that I'd rest him for the rest of the for the rest of his career um, but yeah that's good I'm happy you know what let's see well I, I would like to see us with a whole new set of dy- dynamism today and if we're if we're moving around that midfield with more more, more, ord- more urgency and more energy you know that's just more evidence for my um, my Rooney out campaign so yeah great yeah I mean the only thing I would say about Rooney is that a lot of people were uh, a little bit frustrated by it, saying, well, you know, he's being rested for Watford. He's obviously going to play against Watford. Um, and that frustrated them a bit. As I'll keep saying, I think he will never be dropped. While he's got a contract at Manchester United, he will never be dropped. The only time he will miss Manchester United games is if he can't be bothered or... Well, that's not fair, actually. If he wants a rest, like today, or if uh, he's injured, he will not be dropped. And I think uh, once you start to accept that... You never really have that much of a stress about Rooney. I know a lot of you want him out of the team, but the reality is that is not going to happen. He is a firm fixture at Manchester United. In fact, somebody messaged me last night saying, um, you know, we as fans don't agree with it, but he's bigger than the club. The club treat him like he's bigger than the club because of uh, the preferential treatment he gets. Nobody should be bigger than Manchester United. I'm not going to say that that is true or not, but there you go. Cool guy says, are you happy with the squad? Um, Personally, very, very happy. Uh, Really happy. Um, I think it's a a great lineup. I think it's exciting. I think there's a lot of pace in it, which uh, we, we, we beg for, really. We need pace in our side. And I know it's the Europa League, and I'm not particularly excited about the Europa League, and I certainly won't be towards the end of the season when it could undermine what we're trying to do. But I think at this stage of the season, where the people like Schneidlin have not been able to get game time, Darmy and Smalling, I think it's an absolute godsend, Dan, that we're playing a decent uh, fine side. Um, it's, it's, it's almost a bit like a pre-season friendly in a way, because it's, uh, but it's a competitive one. And uh, I think we'll get a lot out of this, because I think Feyenoord would beat a few teams in the Premier League. So it's a, it's a real test, and we want real tests for those players who've not been playing. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. I... When we got our, you know, I'm not exactly happy about being in the, in the Europa League, but when we did get our group, when our group came out, that sort of did give me a bit of excitement. Like these aren't no, these aren't pub teams, put it that way. Um, and I think it, I think it, as you said, they would be quite a few Premier League. I think they'd be quite a few Premier League teams. They're not, they're not, they're pretty decent. So, you know, it'd be an interesting test for those fringe players. Uh, we got, is it? We got Watford this weekend. We have got we? Watford on Sunday at twelve o'clock. Yeah. Yeah, and like it's not being funny, but Watford aren't that much. Watford aren't better than these lot. So, I think yeah, it'd be an interesting test. Get these boys out. Get Rashford out. I mean, I, I really want to see him playing. He's doing it. For, he's doing it everywhere, man. Let's let's get him on that pitch. Um, let's get him scoring goals because if he starts banging in them goals, Jose. I know Zatan's here, but Jose's gonna have to find a way getting them into that team, whether that's coming from the right or whatever. He needs to be in that team. So. Now I'm excited. I think I think Rashford is going to score a few goals uh, today. I mean, realistically, when you look at the players that aren't playing, um, there's only Rooney, Blind, and then you look on the bench and you probably say uh, Fellaini, who will probably start on Sunday, and then the rest of the positions are up for grabs. So even if, if you're playing tonight, it doesn't mean you can't play on Sunday because I certainly would expect that Pogba would play as well. But um, yeah, Rashford's obviously really exciting. Can't wait to see him. Uh, Martial, I think he's been, uh, not, I wouldn't say treated badly, but I think he's one of our best players. And uh, hopefully, he'll show, hopefully he'll show that tonight. Um, Matter, uh, you know, Matter is Matter. I would like to see Matter playing at number 10. We're led to believe that he'll be playing on the right and Pogba will be playing at number 10 with Herrera in the box-to-box position. Um, and obviously we would have... Um, uh, Schneidlin in the midfield as well so the midfield's really exciting the attack is exciting yeah I probably would like to see Memphis in there but I think Mata was probably unfairly dropped against City and he's given him game time Memphis has got to force his, force his way in I would expect he'll probably get around half an hour but it, this is I'm excited by this team I really am and I think we can we can really go and express ourselves and uh, hopefully give him some food for thought because long term I don't necessarily think that Fellaini is the defensive midfielder we want I don't think Rooney is the number 10 we want Mkhitaryan's not involved because he's injured as we know and Lingard was left behind as was Valencia so this is an opportunity for these lads to show us what they're capable of Um, you touched on Rojo at left back I mean Luke Shaw's obviously been left behind as well and we think he's got a little bit of a niggle himself Um, there isn't really anybody else we can play at left back. I suppose Daly Blind. Uh, Darmian. Yeah, yeah, good shout. Could have played Fozu Menza at right back as well. Yeah, so I mean, 
I don't know. I, personally, I just think Rojo is literally Argentina Phil Jones, so <laughs> I don't trust him at all. No, seriously, I, I just don't. He just he, he does make me crap up pants whenever he's playing. You just you just can't trust him. Um, I'd have I know I'd have thrown Darmy at left back. I would have and put Timothy at right, but did know what it is what it is. So um, yeah, we'll just run a bit, see what happens. Yeah, um, obviously Phil Jones injured. Uh, we better touch on that because somebody's just said on Twitter, what about Phil Jones? Um, I would just repeat um, who what what I've said for a long time, and that is that um, he I wanted him sold in the summer. He's injury prone. He will always be injury prone. I'm not digging him out. I'll, I'll dig him out in a minute on his talent, but I'll dig him out. I'm not <laughs> digging him out on his injuries. Uh, I'm not digging him out about injuries. It, it, it's a medical fact. He, he's the only player in Manchester United history apart from Owen Hargreaves, who can injure himself without actually playing games. I mean, he's just, he's ridiculously injury playing. I can't understand why the club kept him. Um, so no shock there. And also, I think he's not a very good footballer. Dan? <coughs> no, I don't. I think I think it's, tw- oh, who? Rojo or Jones? Well, they're the same thing, like you say, Argentinian Phil Jones, so they're both crap. <laughs> yeah, but I'm talking I, Phil I Jones. Oh, I don't... Oof. I don't see. I mean, well, I can't say I don't see. I'm not going to lie. But when we first signed, I thought, "Who the hell is this?" And then I remember, I think he was playing. I can't remember if it's. I can't remember if it's Bolton. We were playing somebody anyway, and he went on one really good run. I thought, "Oh, actually, he's really good." But the thing with Phil Jones, he's become like a myth now. He's been like some like he's like some urban legend or urban myth because that that silly comment that Ferguson made about him. Yeah. So they yeah. could be anything he wants to be, and I, I don't know why he even compared him with Duncan Edwards but because of that p- people see that he's going to turn into the next superstar and it's just not going to happen I don't see you know what you know what makes me funny I think no other club has ever shown interest in him since he's been at our club but yet he's just he's this next thing that's going to be the next greatest thing and I, I, just, I just I don't know I think he got lucky I think he just swindled his way into that to that uh into this club and he's and he's he's loving life there I don't know how he doesn't even play I don't know it's just ridiculous, and uh, and and Rojo, I, I'm sure. I think we just signed him because he's got tattoos and looks a bit hard. Because we needed someone in defence that looked a bit aggressive when we lost Vidic. Because Rojo does, he brings what Phil Jones brings to the table. That's nothing. Uh, Luke Everson says he's he's better than you, Dan. Uh, Absolutely, that's, that's yeah. why I don't play for Man United. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, good point, Luke. Very true. But I don't think Dan's saying that he, he should be playing for United either. Um, Dan Doherty says Phil Jones is made from Weetabix yeah with about two gallons of hot milk poured all over him and um, Jones too injury prone these days says Matthew Cave uh, Craig Farrell was asking for a score prediction which I really couldn't give you mate because um, I, I just I just do not know I do not know um, I'm looking forward to it it's, it's not something that's high on my priority list to be honest um, but I'm just I'm looking forward to it just to watch some of the players play in a competitive game. I'm not I don't I personally don't give a shit about the Europa League. Uh, Premier League's what I care about. Um, but I am looking forward to watching them. Um, somebody there. Oh yeah, please do drop us a like on the video. It's nice to go over 100 likes quite quickly when we are live and there are a few of you watching. Some people saying there's not enough people watching. Uh, share it, please. Tweet it out, everything like that. That'd be great. Appreciate that. Um, it's good that Darmian's playing, says Shaka Phillips. It is. Um, I mean, if I was saying, we always say on a watch along what to look out for on a watch along when we go live uh, with the match. And it's like, well, what game, what players do you want to look at? And I'm looking at Darmian. I'm looking at Schneidlin. I'm looking at who the number 10 is. I'm looking at Martial. I'm looking at Rashford. Um, there's, there's, I don't like to give too many things that I'll be looking at because there's normally only one or two. So I suppose... Defensive midfielder, really looking at Schneidlin, uh, seeing what he can offer us as opposed to Fellaini. I thought that brilliant comment on uh, one of our videos on Monday night from Tactics Network about Fellaini and how he was so easy to press for Manchester City because he's slow and he can only pass the ball about five or ten yards. So they knew if they pressed him, they were going to win possession, which is very good. So hopefully Schneidlin can do that better because I think Feyenoord will press. Um, And the number ten. I think they're the two positions that concern me the most in the United team. And uh, whoever the number 10 is today, I'd like to see it be Mata, but it's clearly going to be Pogba. Um, so I really want to see how Pogba can play in a more advanced position. Because if he plays well there, then, uh, well, we'd like to think it'll be Rooney's day's number, but I don't think it will be. But yes, Damian, Martial as well. What, what about you, Dan? What, what's, uh, what sort of areas are you looking at? 
I'm looking at, for me, I'm looking at the number 10 because I feel like the number 10 is just being, it's being violated by, by the last three managers. Like, we're just not, we haven't used that number 10 position properly. And that includes Mourinho. I'm sorry, but playing, like, Rooney at number 10 anymore, he's not, like, that position there, we've got better players at that, at that position. I've said it before. Matt is better there. Mkhitaryan is better there. Pog was probably going to show today that he's better than that. So I'm looking at that number 10 role there to see it actually being utilised properly today. And still, after all these years, we still haven't replaced someone in the right midfield. Matter should not be in the right midfield. He's a great player. He's not a right midfielder. He's not even a right winger. Why is he playing out on the right? He's too slow. You know? So I just feel like it, should, it still looks... This team, after all the money that we spent, it still looks so lob, lobsided. On the left, yeah, we're great. We've got the pace and everything down there. And then we've got Valencia right back and then Matter on the right. It doesn't make no sense to me. No, I think... Uh, no, I think I'd, I'd have to agree with you in in, in the fact that Matter is not a right winger. And I, I get I get a bit bored of repeating this, that when Jose's first conf- press conference and he said, um, I'm not one of those people who puts round uh, square pegs in round holes. And to be honest, there are a lot of selections where he has done it. Um I think he's probably playing matter because, as I said, that he doesn't deserve, he didn't deserve to be dropped for the derby. But and we haven't really got that many right wingers available at the moment. I suppose he maybe doesn't see Memphis as a right winger. Um, I know a lot of people would like to see Memphis playing there, but maybe he doesn't see him as a right winger. And obviously, you've got uh, Lingard, who's out. Um, Mkhitaryan's out. They're both right sided players. Um, so you know, maybe matter's the only option he's really got. I don't know. Just throwing, just throwing it out there. I mean, Rashford could play there, but he obviously wants to give him a chance. Uh, Levinson D'Souza says Memphis on the left. Um, and David play Ball- Martial on the right? No, I don't think Martial's a left-sided player. I think they can play there, but I think they're left-sided players. Um, I think the most interesting and exciting thing from this is that, you know, it's all about Watford, Leicester, Stoke before the next international break. And I genuinely do think we've got to get nine points. Um, yes. So Watford's exciting on Sunday at lunchtime. Um, and... I think what tonight is about is about hopefully people stepping up from that derby performance and giving him a few opportun- giving him a few decisions to make. I mean, we expect Rooney to come back in. We'll expect Fellaini to come back in. I'd expect Blind to come back in. But if, if three or four players have a real good performance away from home in Europe tonight, then it makes decisions to make. If Schneiderlin has a blinder, then I know for a fact that the majority of United plan fans, as good as Fellaini's been, they want Schneidlin to play as defensive midfield. So if he has a good game today, the pressure to pick him will be going up there. If Martial plays well, he should be getting that left position back. Um, if Pogba plays well in a more advanced position, they'll be like, Rooney should be dropped. So there's, there's exc- And if Herrera plays well again, he was outstanding in the second half against in the derby. It starts to make decisions for him, but if we have a bland performance, it makes him easy. It makes it easier. So I'm really excited about it, and I'm really hoping that we're going to get some uh, good performances out of the players and that team. And I'm excited by the team. And as I'll say again, in many ways, it, this is the most exciting lineup I've seen this season. Um, apart from maybe I'd like to see Zlatan up front, but I, I'm happy he's been rested. Yeah, it's it. You know what? It's exciting from the point of view of. It looks it looks pacey. It looks pacey. Um, but I don't know. I think it's for me. It's 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 a mixed bag because obviously there's other teams that look more exciting when you've got Pogba and Zatan in one team and, and things of that nature. But I, I don't know. I think a mix of these a mix of this team and a couple of other teams that look much better. Still, I'm still worried about. I'm still worried about the right midfield until until we can say you know what in every position we we look alright. Then I don't. I don't know. It's not that exciting for me because I still. I, th- I think we're still going to run into the same same problems again. It's just like it's not rocket science. You clearly need pace down the right. Put like I know. We, I know you said earlier. Okay, they're not exactly left-sided players, Martial, Memphis, etc. But I'm sure a Martial or Memphis on the right must be must be better than a matter on the right. If that makes sense. Whether or not they're normally a left-sided player, it must be better than. Um, the matter playing on the right. Yeah, uh-huh. I agree. I agree. Um, let's have a look at some of what you lot are saying. Um, matter is a false nine, says Mefta. Memphis should start, says Rack City. Rashford will play right, says Mefta. Well, I can't see how that would work. Um, LaRusso says, Mark, you need glasses if you haven't seen the hundreds of people saying take out Blind. Um, 
have, have I got Blind in my lineup? <laughs> yeah, you have. That's why people are keep saying Blind's not in the team. I thought people were like really like worried. Well, yeah, I don't, I don't read that. I'll change it for, the, I'll change it for you now. Um, match starts in, I don't know. That whizzed by quite happy. It's quite, quite quick. Um, what if Pogba gets injured, Mark? Says Scott, ten thousand. What if Dan wins the lottery? You know, it's not <laughs> happened. We'll, uh, we'll, we'll cross that bridge when it happens. But we've got a lot of number tens, and you know, Herrera has done quite well. Um, Carlos wants a game of FIFA. Can't do that now. But um, FIFA seventeen, very good, by the way. Go and have a look on FIFA the United Stand. Uh, I played on that last night as United. Love him. Rashford came on in the second half while I brought him on. Fantastic. Um, when will the match start? I think it's a five past six kickoff, so about half an hour. Um, Memphis could be good as a striker, says JPH78SK. Uh, what sort of uh, formation do you think we're going to play? I mean, Napil PM says 4 3 3 is our formation. Um, do you think it will be a 4 3 3, Dan? Yeah, I was just looking on Twitter and on um, MUTV. They're, they're saying it's 4 3 3, which is quite interesting. Um, yeah, I think I think it'd be four three three. We've got the players there to suit a four three three, but you know what? Yeah, that's what I'm gonna go with. I think it'd be four three three, and then obviously when we're defending, we probably fall back into what four two three one sort of thing. But um, yeah, that's what I'll go with. Yeah, I mean, uh, I've changed it now. You will see that it is Smalling and Bayey. Um I picked Blind. I didn't pick Blind. I, I wrote Blind down in error. Um, I'm excited to see Smalling play. I probably haven't touched on that enough. Uh, Smalling and Bayi, I think this is something that I've been saying for a long time, that I want Smalling and Bayi to be our centre-backs because I think if you play Smalling and Bayi, you don't have to pick... I think we've had to pick Fellaini. I think he's played well, but I think we've had to pick him because it protects Blin's lack of pace because to play a ball over the top of Fellaini into the flanks that someone's going to exploit Blin's pace is very difficult because he's so tall. Um if you play Schneidlin, obviously Blind could be exposed for pace. But if you don't don't play Blind as a centre back and you play Smalling and Bayi, we're not going to get exposed for pace. I think they're both stronger, quicker, better centre backs. I'm not by any means slagging Daily Blind off. I think he's a great player. I think he's a fantastic squad player. But I just do not trust him as our centre back for a whole season. I think he will make mistakes. I personally didn't hang him out to dry in the derby. I know a lot of people did, and they want to say he was at fault for both goals. For me, he wasn't at fault for both goals. I think you could blame him in a in an indirect way, but bayley has got to win that flick on, and if he misses that tackle, it's a red card. So I understand why he didn't do it. And the second goal, it's a shot that hits the post that then makes Blinds play Ichinawa or, or whatever his name is on uh, on side. So, but Blind made mistakes last year. He did make mistakes last year against West Ham and Spurs away. And I do think that over a course of a season he will make mistakes. So um, for me, it's it's nothing against Blind. I just I'd rather have Smalling and Bay. Um, I don't know where you are on that, Dan. Yeah, well, you know, at the end of the day, he's not a centre back. So you know, people have to remember that. Like, you got to think as a player. Like, if you're a player, you're only going to get you're you're going to play what your manager tells you to play. At the end of the day, otherwise you ain't going to play in the team. So. You can't blame the guy. He does a job. He he isn't doing the most amazing job, but he's not a centre back. Everyone knows he's not a centre back, but he's doing a decent job there. So for me, I mean, what else? What like you got to look from his perspective? What else? What what more can he do? We know he's not an out and out centre back. He's doing the job. He's getting told to play there. Of course, he's going to have a few mistakes in his locker. Do you know what I mean? So I don't know. For me, for someone that's not supposed to be in that position in the first place, I think he's doing he's doing all right. Who, Danny Blind? Yeah. Who would you play though, Smalling and Bay or Smalling and Blind or Blind no, and Bay? I, I, no, I mean, ideally, I play both of them. I play Small, Smalling and, and, and Bailey because that's their positions, and I don't, I don't, I don't like why. I don't see why we, um, as Manchester United, we're a massive club. We keep half arsing it and putting players in positions where they should be playing. Play the centre backs in the centre backs position. Play the left backs in the left back position. Play, no, play C A. Play attacking mid in attacking mid, not our right wing. If we start doing that, we might actually start stringing together. It's a nice bit of play and winning games properly rather than messing about. So that's no, no, that's that's my point of view on, on that. Um, just very quickly, because we've got a really good uh, ten minute t- conversation for you all to get involved in a, in a moment. I'm just uh, making sure that it's the information I've got is correct. But uh, 
Um, Darmian playing, did that surprise you? I, I was sort of thinking he might have been totally frozen out and, and not get any game time like a certain Bastian Schweinsteiger, but he starts today. There's talk of him being sold in January. Um, can Darmian play his way into this side, or do you think it's just... Uh, well, he could have played, you know, he could have played Fozio Menzo, couldn't he? So... Yeah, I think he can play his way into the side. I was a bit, I was getting a bit concerned today, reading the papers and saying, obviously, he's been told he can leave in January, um, X, Y, and Z. But then, you know, as I said, and I think you said as well in pre-season, like, we were quite surprised because Damian seems the sort of defender that Jose would like. Um, whether or not, if he's not impressing him in training or whatever's happened, I think if he puts in a string of good performances, then, yeah, I think, you know, he can be convinced by Jose. I mean, Matt has convinced Jose. Um, against against popular belief, so if you know, if he can do it, why can't Damian? Yeah, I'm I'm, I'm quite excited to see Damian play as well. I mean, I think there's just so much um, so much excitement about that lineup, which, uh, as I keep saying, the Europa League may not be everyone's cup of tea, but a, a game, a, a really tough game, competitive wise, for some of those fringe players to come in and prove their worth. Um, as I said a few minutes ago, I think if the likes of Schneid Schneidlin and Darmian and Smalling and Martial and Rashford, if they come in and have a really good game today, you can't dismiss that because I think Feyenoord away is probably the equivalent of playing someone like Stoke away and playing really well. So you can't discount it if they have good games. These aren't also runs. They're a decent side. Um, just seeing them running out on the pitch at the moment on the coverage that I've got watching. I can also see Jose looking very relaxed. It's a sunny day in Feyenoord. Um, Feyenoord, Rotterdam. Um, leads perfectly into this that um, apparently Roy Keane's come out with another cracker. I was only defending him the other day and he's come out with another cracker. Jose Mourinho is not the special one. Pep Guardiola is. What do you think about that, Dan? Do you know what? Roy Keane really, really, really tries to um, make Man United fans stop loving him. I don't know why. But... Um, I don't know, it just seems like he does anything these days to rile up Man United. I don't know why. I know he's got his issues with Fergie, but come on, Roy, have a day off. Um, you know what it is? It's, would, he been, would he been saying the same thing if we didn't lose at the weekend? You know, so I think it's just one of them ones where it's just like, fair enough, we did lose. Um, I don't know. I don't see how... You know what? Until, until Pep comes over it and wins and wins the league then he's not that special you know he dominated in Spain where there was two teams he went to Germany where there was two teams you know come over here and do it as well Pep until you've done that then we talk because Jose he's done it what he's done it here Spain Italy Portugal so you know for me he's not he's not better than Jose I'll tell you what, it's, it's almost on. perfect timing there Dan because uh, the screen I'm looking at the little ginger assassin has just come on yeah. and uh Talking about United players who just seem to say things to... Uh, I'm sure Kino and uh, Skulls ring each other up every night and uh, they've got a little list of things that they can say to, to cause some controversy. And, uh, you know, I'm sure it's like, uh, have, have a go at uh, Martial or something like that next because that would rile us. But, you know what, as I keep saying, Skulls is a legend and Roy Keane is a legend for me as Manchester United players. Um, but... Some of the comments they come out with I don't agree with. Some of them I think are spot on. I think Scholes was probably right about Valencia and Blind, to be honest. Um, but Roy Keane does come out with some. Um, it doesn't make me li like him any less. I think he's you know an absolute legend of Manchester United. Um, and when he gets it wrong, I'll just agree with it. Um, disagree with it, sorry. Um, so when he says that Jose is the sp isn't the special one, Pep is. Well, we just lost the derby and, and Pep was the manager, but. Um, for some of you who may, may have seen this, I think it's had about 1,200 retweets now. It's a, an edited video that some Manchester City uh, uh, desperado obsessive has put out on Twitter where I was saying that Pep's a fraud and then they put a little music uh, compilation of all his achievements. Um, if I could be bothered to do a little compilation back, I would just have one screen black with white letters that says, all done with Barcelona. That's what Pep's done. He's done everything with Barcelona. With Messi, one of the best players in the world ever and one of the best teams ever. I think me and Dan... Xavi, Xavi and Iniesta. Yeah, yeah. I think we could go and uh, win trophies with Barcelona, to be honest. I don't think... I'm not saying Pep will prove me wrong. Won't prove me wrong. And he will, But for me, he is a fraud. 
not personally, I'm not calling him a fraud personally. I think the press build him up into something that he isn't. You know, he's not gone and won a Champions League with a small, tiny team from Portugal like Jose did or a, or a team of limited uh, skill and ability like Inter or won titles in loads of different countries. Yes, they've won the same amount of Champions Leagues, but he did it with Barcelona. He had unlimited resources and very good players at Bayern Munich and he couldn't win a Champions League. If he comes to Manchester City and he wins the Premier League, um, I will give him some credit because it's going to be a very competitive Premier League. They've had a very good start. But for Roy Keane to come out and say he's the special one, I can only interpret that just because he's won the derby. Because if you're actually talking about ability, uh, managerial success, there is he's got Jose has no peers, and and you know it's it's like winning a battle and losing a war. If you want to say Pep's better than Jose just because they won last week, well. Yeah, maybe, maybe he is at the moment, but we'll see at the end of the season. I just think too many Manchester United players come out and take a pop at uh, United because it's easy to do it. Maybe they've got their reasons to do it. I thought, I thought the way that Roy Keane was kicked out of the club and treated by the club since isn't right. Um, but I'll still support Roy Keane. I think he's a great player. Let's have a look what you lot have got to say. Uh, Red Jack says Keane's just bitter and he misses United like crazy. Um, I don't think he gets the credit he deserves. He's the most decorated captain in our history, Premier League history. Um, he was like Sir Alex on the pitch, for those who ever watched him. One of the best players I've ever seen. I'd have it, be, If you could reincarnate uh, a player, I would want Roy Keane straight away because he's like a, he's a leader on the pitch. So, yeah, he doesn't get, he doesn't get the uh, appreciation he deserves, but maybe doesn't help himself. But uh, Aaron's not happy with him and he says he's Irish. Memphis Depay being frozen out. Thoughts, Mark, says Lad. I think uh, Dan had spoken about that before. I don't think he is being frozen out. I think he's got to work hard to get in this team. Martial deserves to start ahead of Memphis because of his form last year and the fact that he's a better player. And Matt is playing on the right, which isn't Memphis's position. So, you know, Memphis is a bit of a he's a bit of a closed box, really. He's his position is left wing until he proves to somebody else. And at the moment, it's got to be it's got to be Martial for me. Um, Keane was a manager at Gaston Villa but still better than Liverpool you can okay games on BT you can't watch the game here says Mohamed no this is a watch along everybody at the moment the game's not even started this is a watch along we've got the score in front we've got all you lot on the live comments obviously getting involved um, we can't no YouTube channel can legally show a Manchester United game so watch it however you want to watch it sink in with our little timer when it starts and what we want from you lot while you're watching the game is your comments on the game what you think's going well what's not and we interact it's called a watch along because as most of you have said over the time we've been doing this most co football commentary is pretty poor and it's better than watching football on your own when you can watch it collectively with united fans so do get involved um who is number 10 says special c who do you think will be number 10 uh, I'll go. I think it'll be Pogba. I don't know what you're thinking, Dan. Yeah, Pogba. Right. In that midfield, the one that's bald, the one that's laid out, has to be Pogba. There's no one else for me. Um, Trinidad Manchester United Unlimited. Good name. He says, Ander said it in the press conference. It's not always easy to get in the squad because it's a team of mostly world class players now. Fantastic comment. Very, very true. Ashley Young's on the bench today. Michael Carrick's on the bench today. Memphis is on the bench today. They've not even been on our bench for the first few games of the season. Well, I think Young might have been maybe Carrick once or twice. But it's ridiculously hard to get in this squad. And when I was doing... In fact, I can click to this screen for you now. Let's have a look at this and we'll show you. So when this was my predicted lineup from yesterday. And um, so you've got De Gea in goal, Smalling and Jones. I didn't know it wasn't. It was two days ago, wasn't it? So I didn't know Jones was injured. So I've got that wrong. But my back four is right apart from Jones. Uh, my midfield three, nearly right, but obviously uh, Herrera comes in for Mata and Pogba moves up to number 10. Mkhitaryan on the right and uh, Memphis on the left. So it's difficult. It's difficult to get in the squad. I mean, I more or less, more or less have got the right collection of players, apart from Twan Sibiu, who obviously played, on, uh, played for the reserves, didn't he? So he's not been involved. And we've got Fellaini instead. So... It is very difficult to get in this squad, and Ander Herrera is very, very right. But um, it's a long season. We've got a League Cup game next week against Northampton, so that's another opportunity for the fringe players to play. So we have got a massive squad, Dan, haven't we? And, it, and I think, as we've been saying, you've got to just take your opportunity. Um, you know, six or seven out of ten average performances, they're not going to be good enough if you want to get in this team. We, you're going to have to really shine. Yeah, we've got we've got a massive 
we've got a massive squad. And at the end of the day, like when you join the when you join a team that is at the you know at the top table in football, it is what it is, and you, you can't take it personally. You know, you got to remember these players and and the players. I think they they do know that they haven't they haven't signed for like. For Wigan, they haven't they haven't signed for Burnley. Where you think, oh, he's definitely going to start. He's definitely this is Manchester United Football Club, and we're we're trying to get back into the Champions League. We're trying to be at the top of European football. In fact, we are we are there, even though we're in the Europa League. Come on, we're breaking world record transfers. So when when you're at a club that's doing something like that, it is what it is. Like you know, you have to perform. If you don't perform, you're out. It's, it happened here. It happened at Bayern. It happened at Real. If you don't perform, you're out. So you know. Like I said, it is what it is. So hopefully, these players that haven't had the chance to play this season, they do something and they give the manager a headache. And that's what he wants at the weekend. And that's what we want as fans. We want all these players firing all cylinders and thinking, oh, I don't know who's going to play this week. I don't know who's going to play this week. Um, so yeah, that's that's my thoughts on that. Uh, somebody just asking there about what it says behind me. Um, you should be able to, if I get out of the way, it says the United Stand. There you go. On Old Trafford. A uh, bit of graphic editing there. I think Martin did that, so well done. Um, Darren Young liked my team. To be honest, I prefer this the team that we've got. I think it's really. I didn't. Ex- I didn't not expect it, but I would not. I don't think Van Hal would have done it. Abid Abid's not happy because his comments not been read out. It has now. Um, Schneidlin holding Herrera box to box. Pogba ten says Anand S. Yes, excited about that. Very excited about it because if you think about what we've been playing for the last few weeks. Fellaini, um, slow. Pogba, not really been that fit. Rooney, slow and no first touch. So we go to Schneidlin, who at his best can be one of the best midfielders in the country. Uh, Pogba, playing at number 10, less less, ex- less expectation about him getting back. And Herrera, you know, what we always said about last year with Van Hal's midfield was play Schneidlin and Herrera because they'll chase the ball down, they'll be dynamic. I would love to have seen us sign Matuidi because I just think, or a Kante, because they will chase the ball down in defensive midfield. Um, I really hope Schneidling can just show some sort of form to do that, because he's looked, in the, in the year he was at United last year, he's just looked a bit too slow. We need somebody to come in, in that position who can really, you know, get some pace and dynamism in there. And I think if he can do that, he'll keep the team. Um, Truth starts now three, says, I really hope Fozu Menza can get a look in tonight. I hope he, if he comes on, he comes on as a defensive midfielder, because I think that's his future. He can be like a Kante Matuidi, but... Um, I suspect he'd probably come on at right back, but I'd love to see him coming on as a defensive midfielder. Um, it's a massive, massive position, and I think that's where his future lies. But he's only a young lad, and to, to be given that massive responsibility, um, I'm not sure he'll get it, but uh, we'll have to just see. Um, this is our best midfield, says BJ Fakarid. Um Are we 18 minutes from the game? I think we are. It might be five past six. Mark, new studio. We have made a little slight couple of uh, changes to the studio and they will change even more uh, for Watford um, because of the Droity Devils left us, unfortunately, and uh, he doesn't, you know, it seems unfair for him to leave his designs behind. So we've had to change things up a bit, but uh, all the best to him. And uh, Feyenoord are a bit crap, so United should maul them with a 400 million team tonight, says RPFS2. (laughs) Maybe a bit of a kiss of death there, but what, what? I mean, it's not easy, Dan. What are your predictions for the game? What are you expecting? Not necessarily a score prediction. Give us that. You have been right before, but um, are we? Are we? Are we going to win this game? Do you think it's going to be a draw? Do you think it's going to be quite open? Yeah, I think I think we're going to win. I think there's going to be goals. Um, I think I think the players, the team, and the and the uh, coach and staff are very disappointed of, of what happened at the last at last weekend. Um, I could see us really going for it, I, and uh, you know, you might think I'm crazy, but I could see a four-one victory. Um, I think they'll score, but I can really, uh, you know, a four-one. I can go one step further. I think Rashford will get one or two. I think Pogba will score his debut goal. Um, so yeah, I'm going for four-one. Rashford and Pogba to both score. And Dan has been right before. I, I, I'm, I'm tempted to call him Mystic Dan. But four uh, one would be beautiful. Um, a bead, a bead. Uh, we are, we have got the football blogging awards coming up really soon. And while we're only twenty minutes off uh, kick off, I'm just going to ask you if you go into the video description, third paragraph down. If you're on Twitter, if you click next to best fan channel and best club vlog, it will take you through to a page where all you've got to do is tweet out the tweet that's there, and you will your vote will be cast. 
If you're not on Twitter, the line below which says, or you vote through the website and vote for is in every category, click that link and you can do it there. Really would appreciate it. We are going to be at the Football Blogging Awards filming in November, so it'd be great if we can actually be a finalist and uh, give you all a shout out. And if you are new to the United Stand, because I know the watch along tends to bring people in who are new, um, please like the video and subscribe to the channel if you are new because we have daily content on the channel. We have Sunday Night Live, which is our interactive show like this, review of the weekend. Ooh, that was nice on the telly. And uh, we have... Uh, are you watching the same thing, Dan? And uh, the... Uh, uh, yeah, I am. Yeah, it's getting better. It's good. If you're watching BT, it's yeah, good. Yeah, it is. And... Um, <sighs> Lost my concentration well, on two big things then. And um, what else? Yeah, and uh, we obviously do the live watch-alongs. We have previews. There's loads on the United stand. We are the biggest independent Manchester United fan channel and we're nothing without your support. So get involved. And on that point, I will go back to your live comments because, as I said, it's all about you. And what I want to do, uh, Darren Young's just voted for us, which is great. Like I say, while you're listening to me, please just click those links and vote for us. It'll be really appreciated. Um... But while, um, while I'm looking at your comments, and Bayo Adelki saying we need Fabinho, not till January, mate. Um, while I'm on your comments, please do get involved during the game and tell us what you're thinking about it. Because I, I personally love that. I think Dan does as well. It's the tactical analysis we want. You know, if we're 10 minutes in and it's not going great, tell us where you think it's going great. Because we'll shout out those comments. We'll try and shout out as many as we can. But we'll definitely shout out that sort of thing as to, you know, what subs you'd make or who's doing well, what, what do you think is going good, what do you think is going bad. Please do get involved. And as I said, the two things I would be watching for from my point of view during this game is what is Schneider in the defensive midfield? Can he put in a good enough performance to put a bit of pressure on Fellaini? And that number 10 position is if it's Pogba, can he put enough on, on that uh, position to make uh, Rooney's position under threat? Which I don't think it actually ever will be. But uh, And as a side to that, the Smalling and Bay partnership, how can they play well together? Darmian at right back, I really hope he grabs that opportunity. Martial at left midfield and obviously um, Rashford up front. Lots to get excited about. Apart from Rojo, it's left back, which Dan cannot stand. But uh, let's take some of your comments. Um, oh, Special C, that was a real effort you made with that, with your dab little picture. Can we watch the game live, says Peter Love. No, we don't show the game, unfortunately. It's a watch-along. So we will be talking about the game, interacting with you, but we can't show the game. Uh, we never have on the watch-along, and it's just impossible to do that. But we will have a timer going up in a minute when it kicks off, uh, just below me. Score updates, scorers, talking about the game, interacting with you. So if you can find a way of watching it, just pause it when it starts and sink in with us and get involved with the United Stand during the game. It's a great experience. Um, looking forward to seeing Bay and Smalling together, says the Rampage Gamer. Uh, Luke Maxted says Memphis will get at least 30 minutes. Matter will rarely finish a match under Mourinho. Very good point. We have got a game on Sunday. I would expect us to use all three substitutions. Uh, so that's a great point from Luke. Um, I love the pace on the pitch to begin the match, says Andrew Rossi. Yep. Who is the captain, says uh, Shashida. Shashida. Um, I can find that out for you quite quickly. Uh, hopefully quicker than somebody can comment because they'll normally put it up. My guess would be Smalling, but... Um, no, they haven't put it up on the team. Oh, that's interesting. I, I don't actually know who the captain is, though. They normally put it up on the list. Uh, but uh, it's not up on I think there. it's De Gea. I think it's De Gea. Oh, maybe it's De Gea then, yeah. Yeah, it makes sense. Smalling, I think, should have it. But I suppose he needs to focus on his game, which is a wise decision. Is Memphis playing, says Peter Love. Uh, we do have the team news and subs going below me on the yellow stripper. Uh, st ticker? Stripper? I don't know why that's in my mind. I'm going back to them things I just saw a minute Yay. ago. I was going to say, he's watching that video, wouldn't you? I think a bit too much. <laughs> so, yeah, he's on the bench. Smalling, a lot of people are saying, is the captain. So, yeah, I do, okay, I, no enough. issue with that. Yeah, absolutely. Callum says Rooney's going to be sold and Bale's going to be brought in in January. <laughs> we can dream. Yeah. Um, somebody missed, mentioned it then, and I'll throw it to you, Dan, while I find their name again, because it's unfair not to shout them out. Are you worried about a lack of, a lack of match fitness in the game? Which is a very, very good point, actually. There are a number of players. Well, I can think of Darmian, Rojo, Schneidlin, Smalling. Uh, that's four players straight away who haven't really had any game time. They need game time, though. I suppose it's a, it's a double-edged sword, isn't it? Yeah. They need game time. So it's like, what do you do? Do you just play them in the under-21s? You know, so it is what it is. Like, when it's August, September, until you get to like November-ish, late October, November, no one's that 
that match sharp. So you just have to just bite it and go with it. And, you know, it's either that or, or they don't get game time ever. So, yeah, it's what it is. Yeah, it was uh, it was MU40, MU4090 who asked that question. So you've got your little shout out there, mate. So a very good question. I think it has legs, um, but they're only going to get match fitness by playing. Um, we could get undone tonight. I mean, I don't know loads about Feyenoord. They are a decent Dutch side. They are at home. We've never really been to Holland and stuffed anybody. Um, and it is a bit of an untested team. But grab the opportunity. It's like anything in life. This is a big opportunity for those players. Grab it and uh, take the opportunity. Um, and I'm, I'm excited about that. You know, if we'd put Valencia out today and Fellaini in the midfield and Rooney had played and Zlatan had played, I'd have been like... Why? You know, what are we going to learn? We've got players who, who I think can play in this first team. Let's give them a chance. So I think Jose needs applauding for that. He's made a lot of changes away from home in a in a in a competitive tournament. Um, good. I'm happy about it. Um, Ompa Lompa Lompa says, "The United Stand. Do you want me to post my question in case you didn't see it, or if you don't respond, stop." Uh, that's unfortunate because I don't know what your question was, mate. Um, so you post it again, and uh, I will see if uh, we'll post it again because I can't see it anywhere. Um, let's see if we can find another question. It's Dazza says, do you think we should just sell Darmian? I think no, give him a chance. Um, I do agree with what Skull said, that Valencia isn't a right back. Darmian might not be that right back, but I'd like to be, I'd like him to be given a chance because he started the season really well last year and he was never really given a run of games after that. Um, that's my thought on Darmian. I can't remember what you think about him, Dan, but don't you think he should be sold? Is that right? So Damian, no, yeah. I, I like Damian. I think he's good. Right. I think he's good. I, I, I think he's a, um, I, he's a Jose defender any day. I'm so surprised he hasn't played. I think he's. I like him, and I really hope he performs uh, well in this match and um, he starts getting some game time. Yeah, I, I agree. I, I've been a big fan of Damian for a while. He sort of uh, reminds me of Herrera, and I think if he gets a, not in the way he plays, but just the way he's been treated, and I think if he he's given a proper chance, he will do it. Uh, Stony Home says Latan's the king of the north. Uh, Darmian is a solid defender, says Gung Shi. I always believe, and that's a really good point from Gung Shi, I always believe that a defender, a right back, should, their first asset should be defending. Um, I think Valencia's done really well going forward. He's set up a few goals. But I saw something in the derby I didn't like about Valencia, and that is when we're playing the better teams, he gets a chance to put a cross in first time, he takes a touch, we pass backwards. You've got to be able to put that ball in first time. And I think Di I think Valencia, when he's got time, he's good at the dinky cross. But when he's got to put a cross in first time, he's not able to do it. I mean, you know what? I don't think Darmian is either. But I think he's a better defender. I sort of agree with what people are saying about Fabinho. Maybe we need to go and get a def uh, right back who can defend and put a cross in first time. But we probably don't have one at the moment. Um, the Rampage Gamer. This is a good point, And I'm going to throw it to Dan straight away while I think... Do you think our defence partnership of Bay and Smalling have any weaknesses? Brilliant question. Yeah, it does. It has the weaknesses of of Bay being so inexperienced. I mean, I know he's done well, and I've been his biggest supporter since he's come here. But at the end of the day, he's he, he's still inexperienced. Uh, um, he, he's yeah, he's, he's new to Premier League. He's adapted well. He's young, so on his down to him, it's just usefulness, and sometimes. You know, sometimes you have to know not, not to be so rash, and because uh, you know that could cost us in the future. And Smallin, Smallin has the same syndrome I said that Rio Ferdinand used to have, where sometimes he just switches off. Though obviously he's not Rio Ferdinand. Ferdinand is world class or was world class um, in his day, but Smallin does switch off sometimes and makes some stupid decisions. I think he's a good defender, but I think he's not. He's not perfect, but he, he does make some silly decisions. So that's my only thing. I think it's just down for. The only, yeah, the biggest weakness with those two is inexperience. That's the only thing with them, I reckon. I reckon if they they can grow together, at the moment it's very very inexperienced uh, parent at the back. Um, I'm just uh, just reading a comment from Martin there that I can't repeat. Uh, we've got uh, so. <laughs> um, yeah. It wasn't I'd that Bake Off, was it? No. Yeah, Martin loves the bake-off, and I think Dan loves the bake-off as well. Yeah. I mean, I'd love to talk about... No, no, it's not me. <laughs> you were it's watching. The wife, the wife. He, they were talking last I night was. about watching the bake-off. Uh, I'll, I'll admit it, I watch the bake-off, but I always watch it on a Sunday because my kids like to watch it as well. But uh, I think 
you could sort of liken the Bake Off to football, I think. It's like too much money, you know. They've gone for the money. They've gone to Channel 4 for the money. And forget about the fans and everything like that and the content and the fact there's going to be adverts and they're going to lose, you know, presenters, stroke players. It's all about the money with the Bake Off and it is disappointing. But back to United. Um, yes. Back to United. I am excited about this. I'm really excited. I can't wait for the game to kick off. And I think... We are about 10 minutes to kick off, so I've got a couple of uh, tweets to uh, sort of uh, send out. But I want to get a couple of comments on the live comments from you guys. Let me find where you are. No, is that our live comments? It is, yes. Okay, so um, Half says, Mark and Dan, what do you think is Pogba's best position? In my opinion, it's number 10, as he can roam free and really show his attacking ability. You know what I'm going to say to that is that I said um, I defended Pogba in the week and said that he's he's getting a lot of stick, but he's getting a lot of stick because Rooney's playing in his position. And loads of people went, he's not a number 10, he's a box-to-box midfielder. But he wasn't a box-to-box midfielder last week. He was playing as like a, a midfielder with Fellaini. Pogba isn't a defensive midfielder. Maybe he will become a better defensive midfielder as he gets older. He's only 23. But his ability and his talent is as an attacker. And the reason and, and where he does his best work is in and around the number 10 position. I don't think he's a number 10. I think what he is, is the attacking midfielder in a midfield three. And I think that's what we're going to see today. I don't think we're playing a number 10 today. I think we are playing a midfield three with Pogba as the attacking element in that. Herrera chasing around. And Schneidlin holding the midfield. That's what I think, Dan. And uh, I think they we're getting hung up on him being a number 10. I think he can play number 10. I think he'll be the more attacking midfielder today. But when he was at Juventus, that's what he did. He was the more attacking midfielder of a midfield three. Yeah, for me, he's he's not he's, a, he's like a 10.5 for me. He isn't he isn't that nailed on 10. But, you know, you look at someone like Mato, you say, oh, he's a 10. Look at Silva and say, oh, he's a 10. Okay, he still plays on the right or whatever, but he is a 10. Pogba, and like, a lot, you know what, I get a lot of this from my friends. I say, oh, Pogba's been crap since he signed. He was crap in the Euros. For for one, in the Euros, he's played out of position. And since here, he, he can't be confined to that one nailed on place. He is that Roman guy. He's that sort of player. He's a luxury player as well. You've got to give him that free role to operate and slip in and slip out. And... With Rooney not being on top of his game, he is blocking that that pathway for Pogba. So again, uh, sort of going along with you, he's not a ten, but he is. He's a decent ten, but for me, he's like a ten point five ish sort of free rolling, free roaming player. If that if that makes sense, which it doesn't, but it does. No, in it, does, a way. it does to me. Um, Reese Ward says, Mark, random question: Where were you when we beat Roma seven one years and years ago? I was I was in, I was living in Ireland, mate. So uh, I would have been watching it. I remember it well. I remember that carrot goal. Um, the sad thing is we didn't win the Champions League that year. Um, no. I think we just ran out of energy, but uh, it was uh, it was a great uh, great performance and uh, a great side. I think Al- I'm getting older, but I'm, if I remember right, I think Alan Smith was playing up front. Um, cause yeah, he, he was. He, he scored. He scored a goal. Yeah, um, I'm sure that we didn't win the title that year. I think it was the year after, but um, yeah. it was a big statement that sort of led us into it. Um, Faisal says Manchester will, Manchester will win if anyone bets with me um, let's all bet with him and then they'll win uh, Pogba is dialing it in from outside the box will come good Pogba is excellent on FIFA 17 by the way get it shoot from anywhere um, the team is coming out now so I just need to sort out uh, a few things Lionel Grant says Mark why you look so stressed I don't I'm, not, I'm, I'm feeling fine um, I had a big drive up to Bolton it's the weather it's hot it is hot. It is hot here today. Yes. In fact, it's so hot. Oh, you can't see. You're lucky. What you can't see what I'm wearing below. I am wearing something, but I'm in my boxes, so uh, it is hot. So am I. <laughs> <laughs> um, in fact, that, I need to test that again. If we score, yeah, I'm all right. I'm all right. <laughs> um, JJ Sellers never knew you had kids. Yeah, I've got about six, and maybe another six that I don't know of. But no, I'm only joking. Um, Glory United. Any concerns about Schneidlin? No. Excited to see him starting. Um, Today, Jose got it time. The players are coming out on the pitch, so we will be kicking off very soon, which means I need to throw a question to Dan uh, because I need to sort out the timer. Um, LaRusso reckons I'm winning a, a uh, a mini skirt. Should we expect to win the league this year, says Jake Shorricks. There we go. There's a question for you, Dan. 
Should we expect it? Uh, should we expect anything as fans? Um, no, nah, that's yeah. I'll answer the question. Yeah, we should. Why not? We spent a lot of money. We have. We've got. We've got the best manager in the league. You know, people say, "Oh, hi, you're not going to win the league now." Why? Because we lost. We lost one game. Nothing's changed for me. We've got. We've got the best sort of player. We've got the best set of players. It's getting them into the team. It's not picking players just on name. Um, pick on performance. Start playing players like Rashford. I don't care how young he is. I don't care if he didn't cost us anything. You start. You play them. Um, once we start doing that, and we get our act together, yeah, we can win the league. Because at the end of the day, you look, you look around to the other top what three, four teams around us. They ain't better than us. You know, they're, they're not like miles better than us. So why can't we win it? So yeah, why not? Let's go for it. Let's go for that and a, and a, um, and, a, and the cup. I'm not I'm not bothered about the Europa. I'd be very very happy with the Premier League and the FA Cup this season. Yeah, I'd, they're uh, the two that I would prioritise. I, I totally agree. Yeah. I mean, I'd love to retain think, the FA Cup. Yeah, absolutely. I think, you know, the, the FA Cup, people can, people can plow, downplay the FA Cup all they want. The FA Cup, for me anyway, as I think that's a very impro- important trophy worldwide, the FA Cup. I think it's just it's such a historic trophy. Um, so, if, yeah, if, if we win those two, I'll be very happy. And then obviously next season is a different, different story in regards to the Champions League. But yeah, why not? Let's go for it. Um, just for everybody there, I was just going to quickly say, Dan, the timer is going at the moment. The game hasn't kicked off. Dan was talking very interestingly, as he always does. And what I was going to do is say, the timer will start when the game kicks off. So you can see how the timer works. We'll update the scores, everything like that. I sometimes need a bit of a shout out for the scores because I get excited or over uh, analyzed when we let goals in. So the timer will be reset back to zero. But as soon as it kicks off, I will start it and you can sync in with our performance. And the reason I say that is because, obviously... Um, we are a live stream, so we will be probably anywhere between 10 and 20 seconds behind real time. So if you want to, if you want it to be fun and you sat at home watching the game, just pause it when it starts to sink in with our timer, and it makes it far much more fun. I want to see loads of comments from you lot during the game about tactical stuff, who's doing well. There's a lot of things to look out for today. Schneider in defensive midfield, Pogba playing as that attacking pivot, Martial's back on the left. Darmian, how can he do on the right? Um, the, mid, the defensive partnership of Smalling and uh, Bay. Loads to look. Loads. I expect loads and loads of comments from you all as well. And uh, Dan's up to something. He's looking at him. He's covering the screen. I hope he's not going to get X-rated. Um, so, yeah, loads of comments from you. Please like the video before we go live. Pogba's doing a little bit of a prayer on the pitch. Um, share the video. Subscribe if you've never been on the United Stand before. Loads of daily comments and interactivity. That's what we're all about. It is your channel, which is why we have the live comments um, and it is about to kick off so I'm about to hit start on the timer they've done me and we're off we are off the timer's up as well and we're off good exciting looking forward to it and uh, I'm, not, I'm not loving the camera angle if I'm honest but uh, it's a bit like it's a bit like FIFA actually when I was playing last night in 17 I don't like the camera angle for Chelsea but uh, uh, you've got to put up with it sometimes. Oh, that um, journey game. Yeah, I haven't, I haven't played the journey game yet. I've only I've had a couple of friendlies as United, and uh, right. it's uh, I like it. I like it a lot. Yeah, it's much more fluid. It's much more fluid than sixteen. In fact, if anybody likes FIFA, I'm going to do a little FIFA seventeen league where I'm going to put like I think either six or eight of the teams. <laughs> and play against the computer and just do like a big league because you can't play online which is a bit of a shame but that's on our new United Stand FIFA League which you can subscribe to if you want um, channel is it so, in the description? I don't know, I don't know. I could probably do it. Um, looking at the team then just to get an, uh, um, an early tactical snapshot um, and I'll take some of your comments as well we've got definitely Rashford up front Schneidlin in the midfield as defensive midfielder and Herrera sort of doing that box-to-box position. Pogba as the more attacking uh, position. Matter on the right, Martial on the left, Rashford up front, as I said. So it is pretty much as we've been talking for the last hour or so. Um, but it's not a number 10. I, I think people need to grasp that we aren't playing a number 10 tonight. What we're doing is you've got Schneidlin and then you've got Herrera and Pogba next to him as the two sort of attacking midfielders with Schneidlin holding the midfield. It's called a 4-3-3. We won't be using a number 10 today. Um, it will be Pogba. Pogba will be the more attacking one of the two, but him and Herrera will be expected to share the role. Kong wants us to show the game. Tiring. We can't show the game. No YouTube can. It's illegal. Uh, it's a watch along. Um, it's something. 
totally different. You watch it or you don't watch it and uh, you sink in with us and start getting your comments in. Um, loads of people saying show the game again. I, th I thought people might have uh, grasped this now by now. It's a watch along. It's the United Stand, the biggest independent Manchester United fan channel on YouTube. And it's a watch along. So we are watching the game. You are probably watching the game. You sink in with our timer. You give us your thoughts on the game. If you're not, some people don't watch the game. They just take our commentary. But uh, it's... Um, it's born out of an idea that a lot of us were just, you know, a lot of people saying I watch the game on my own, I get so frustrated. This way you can watch the game and interact with United fans and feel that your voice counts. So please do. How long kickoff of this match, says Bayou? It's kicked off, which is why we've got the timer going and says 2.54, which it is currently. Mark, if you could bring one former United player back, dead or alive, who would it be? It's a bit of a weird comment for the first five minutes of a game from Reese Ward there, but I'll answer it. It'll be Duncan Edwards for me, um, just because I heard so many things about him from my granddad. Um, I think he's probably the most deserving player in our history to come back from the dead if it was possible. Um, you know, died so young and had such a great talent. But uh, on a light, more heart light, on a more light-hearted note, I'd, I'd also say Roy Keane because I just think uh, they don't make players like that anymore. Dan. Dead or alive, it sounds extremely strange. Again, um, yeah. I don't really know what to say now because I don't really want to offend the ones that have died. Um, let's go with uh, let's go with Cantona. Only being because I think at the moment because we lost all our swagger and we seem to lost our identity, I think he had been that back the same way as Latin has. So Cantona. Yeah, Luke Everson says Bobby Charlton. I must just confirm, Bobby Charlton and Eric Cantona aren't dead. They haven't died. <laughs> it's dead or alive what player you could bring back. It was a good question, but uh, I don't want people to think the worst. Um, as it started, says Peter Love. Yeah, when we've got the when the timer's up, that means the game started. And and, we're, and if you want to sink in with us, well, wherever you're watching it. Um, or Best, Chad Farhan, George Best. Yeah, very good shout. It has started. The game has started. Sultana Mart says, come on, United. Actually, you know, Dirk Kout, ex-Liverpool scum, uh, he's playing for Feyenoord. I forgot to do this before the game kicked off. Get in the comments, tell us where you're watching from. This is some, it's a personal thing I think a few people on the United stand quite like, but it's always, I just love to know where everybody's watching from. It, uh, it gives me an immense feeling of pride that one, that we're able to interact with so many people around the world because of the wonders of modern technology, but also just to see what a united army we have of, of supporters there's a good run there from Martial which is nice to see running through the midfield little play into Herrera and we've retained possession um, we haven't had a lot of the ball in the first few minutes it's been uh, basically Feyenoord who are the home side but uh, we've had the ball for a few minutes here and it's good play and it's Pogba and he's found a bit of room for Rashford nearly got a shot off there layoffs cleared Let's have a little look at you lot. Leicester, Nepal, Denmark is where Carl Pettersson is. New York, Mr. Witch Chamberlain. Never been, would love to go. Shan Maloney says Manx Scum. <laughs> India says Rishab. Indonesia says Fadal. Lion City. Uh, Arkansas says Kurt67. India, all over. Absolutely all over. Pakistan, Ahmad. Australia, New South Wales, Darren. Prime Cantona. Oh, Reese Ward is, is dishing the question out. You need to do this on a Sunday, Reese, because you've you're on fire tonight. Prime Cantona or Prime Zlatan? I'll bring Dan in for that. Uh, Cantona. End of the day, yeah, I like Zlatan a lot, but Cantona's legend at United. So um, Cantona. Yeah, definitely. You know, Cantona is a United legend. I think that's the difference, isn't it? We've had uh, we've had Zlatan for three or four games. We'd be very naive and bandwagon-esque to suddenly say Zlatan over Cantona it has to be Cantona um, Indonesia Fadil Australia Vaham Zabata is in India watching from Nepal ba Bangladesh Stony Home Norway Tribe Power Bangladesh again South Africa Matthew Kike London where's that no I'm only joking Nick well Rashford's got the ball here out on the right while I just uh, defer from the live comments for a moment uh, a little bit lazy from Rashford in a couple of layoffs there and we've lost it again um, just needs to sort his final ball out but I 
we should be uh, we should be able to beat this Feyenoord side. But it's uh, the interesting thing, Dan, is that it is the Europa League, and 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 it's it's proven in the fact that no British club has actually really won it, have they? I think I think Chelsea won it, didn't they, quite recently? But nobody's ever really takes it seriously. But on the continent, they do. I mean, this is a packed out stadium for Feyenoord, um, and they take it seriously, the Europa League in Europe. I just think it's uh, it's such a massive tournament, and in and in the Premier League, we we don't. And and I can I sort of don't want us to take it that seriously in the second part of the season because I've seen it ruin people's league form so many times with this Thursday Sunday thing. Yeah, it does ruin it. Yeah, you know what? The English the English people they don't like it. Our media doesn't like it. Um, you know what? I I have no I'm interested, but at the same time, it's sort of I think I feel like we're in that position at the moment where it's just like you know what, beggars can't be choosers. And you know, last year you think about it, yeah, it was great winning the FA Cup, but a few seasons before that, we wouldn't have been happy with that. I said I'm not saying that we're happy now, but it was good to win something. You know, so if we can go out there and do something, let's just go and do it because. Despite despite our reservations to it, Jose seems like he wants to go for it, and the players, all of them, you hear Pogba, Zlatan, and they're all talking like, "Oh, we want to win this, we want to win this." So it looks like it looks like they're really going to go for it. I wouldn't agree with that. I think this is going to be one of the hardest seasons ever in the Premier League. Because I think we should be focused on that. But oh, hang on a minute. Oof. Um, but yeah, um, it is what it is, mate. I just want the season to sort of be done and get back to the Champions League where we belong. I'm just wondering why you're a couple of seconds ahead of me, but I'm, I don't think I'm watching it on HD. Are you watching it on HD? No, nah, because um, it, it goes like five seconds slow or something if you're on HD, so I put it on regular. Yeah, uh, yeah, you want yeah. you want BT Sport free, yeah? Yeah, yeah. It's, you know, it might just be a second out uh, from a corner there. Um, right, let's have a look at some of your comments. Aston Villa are better than United, says Issa. Yeah, facts, stats and history prove otherwise. Um <laughs> Vishavik Deep wants uh, a shout out. We better win this as Houdini B. Um, it's interesting. I know a lot of you enjoy the Europa League. I'm enjoying it at the moment, but uh, it is interesting how even though it's the same gap Wednesday to Saturday is the same gap Champions League wise as Thursday to Sunday. Teams seem to struggle on the Sunday after the uh, Europa League, and I hope that doesn't impact on us too much. I mean, Watford have had a whole week off, but. Um, I'll throw this to you, Dan, because I've just got to quickly run off for 30 seconds and do something. Um, boring stuff like put the oven and the hot water on. But um, the Europa League, do you want to win it? Do you want to win it? Would you risk the Premier League form in the second part of the season being, un, you know, falling away to try and win the Europa League? I'll throw it back, back to you. Yeah. Uh, do I want to win it? No. Yeah, yeah, I do want to win it because at the end of the day, I think I feel like the manager's going for it, the players are going to play, as I said. So I feel like if we're going to go for it, there's no point of wasting our time just going through all the games that we have to go through to get to the quarterfinals and semifinals and then finals just just to not win it. It makes no sense. So for me, I say go for it, um, go go for everything. I mean, that's why we've got this massive squad. We could say that the squad's getting stretched thin or whatever. At the end of the day, these players get paid a lot of money. So what if they got a play on Thursday? Go for the win. Uh, let's see what else we've got there. And, you know, it, I think uh, and another thing as well, it gets us used to playing these European teams because it's all well and good saying, oh, you know what, screw the Europa League, let's get out of it as soon as possible. Just finish in the top four and get Champions League. And then, and then what? Could get into the same position as last time, where we start playing teams in the, in the group stage and just get battered. So I say go for it, go as far as you can and win win the damn thing because we've got more than enough players to do it. Yeah, I've picked up on what you're saying there, which is which is perfectly fine. It's a bit of a game update. We're 11 minutes in. Um, it's it's pretty much even, Stevens. If I'm honest, uh, not a lot, not a lot going on. Um, both teams moving the ball around fairly, but not really causing any opportunities. Uh, or anything to write home about, which you'd expect in the first 10 minutes. Um, I'm really trying to sort of keep an eye on... What I'm looking at with Schneidlin is, because I've seen Fellaini doing this for three games, I know how quick he is. I'm looking at Schneidlin's 
sort of body speed movement as opposed to what Fellaini offers. So I'm sort of keeping an eye on that. And, um, you know, he, he clearly is a quicker player. That's that's There's no doubt about that. But um, I'm not... I don't, don't want to get too negative about um, what Feyenoord may do. Uh, well, somebody's just gone down injured there with a, with a late tackle. Bye. It's like Bailey. But uh, just very quickly, what Dan was saying there, he's, he has hurt himself, Bay, to be honest. I think it might be in the old uh, crown jewels, to be honest, hopefully. Um, as we watch it back. Hopefully it's a kick in the knackers. And I don't like to say that about to any bloke, but it means it won't be a bad injury. No, he has uh, There's nothing nowhere ah, near there. He sort of fell badly by the looks of it. It's a good, strong tackle. Yeah, he's he fell badly. Stamps, doesn't he? Yeah. Oh, no. Oh dear, it's it's not looking good. It's not looking good for Bay, if I'm honest. Ah, this is the this is the thing that Jose said. I won't get loads of injuries. And Manchester United, over the years, we've always always had tr problems with injuries to centre backs at this time of the season. I hope it's not bad. Big fire, so he's getting warmed up just in case. This is this would just be typical for United. He's jarred his knee. Hopefully, if it's a jarred knee, which I've had, I don't know whether Dan's had or any of you lot have had, he might be able to walk it off. But um, worst case scenario, he's torn all his ligaments. Don't be negative, Mark. But we don't we don't want that. He's up on his feet. It does look like a bit of a jarred knee to me. But yeah, he's such a he's, he's such a beast. He might have done his ligaments and just stood up and tried to run it off. So hopefully, he's going to be okay because. We don't want to start picking up the same old injuries um, in centre back. But as I was saying before, about uh, and I, I respect what Dan says about the Europa League, and you know we've got a big enough squad to win it. I think we have. My ma my main concern is, and the reason I'll say this now is that a decent shot there, but it's straight at the hair from about thirty yards out from Feyenoord. Is that um, I've seen it so many times in the second half of the season. I think you play six games in the group stage of the Europa, then you get a rest at Christmas, and then I think there's another probably 10 games, so five rounds before you get to the final, where only one team wins the final to get one place in the Champions League. Um, so it's a lot of effort to win a trophy that, well, we're going to come in the top four for sure anyway. So all you're doing it for is the Europa League. And I know we've never won the UEFA Cup, but it has destroyed second, you know, so many British teams who've tried to win it. Their league form goes out the window in the second half of the season. We can't afford that. So for me... I'd rather just be focused on the Premier League and not the Europa League because I just don't want to mess up, mess that up. That's the only reason. Um, if you're saying to me we'll win the league and the Europa League, then of course I'll take it. But it won't be easy. It won't be easy. You play more games to win the Europa League than you do for the Champions League, and that is difficult. So good play yeah. by Herrera there, using his body and a, a decent. Well, it was a bit behind Pogba to be honest, but but he's come back on. So. Um, I just don't know whether hopefully he can run it off. But, the, you know, Pogba's definitely not playing as a number 10. He's just come quite deep there. He's more attacking midfielder. Rojo typically loses the ball. <laughs> yeah, it's clumsy by him. Un, Unlon Loader says, good lad, Bay still playing. Cole Johnson saying, could Pogba be better as a centre midfielder in the future? Or is he better as a... A midfielder. He's not really playing as a number 10. We've got a decent free kick position here. Uh, I'm thinking Pogba. I'm thinking Mata. It's right on the edge of the box. Who yeah, takes it's definitely it? Free Who kick. takes it, Dan? Who takes it? For me, uh, that's, that's Pogba territory for me. Um, yeah, that's it. Pogba territory. Yeah, and he's, he's standing over it anyway, so it looks like it's him. It is going to be Pogba. Sanchez says Pogba's better than Pele. Well, he'll score this then, won't he, Sanchez? Ramsey United, Pogba, question mark goal. Question mark. He's about to take it. We're on the edge of our seats. He takes it. It's got good height. It's into the keeper's arm. It's a decent free kick. Decent yeah, free kick. not too bad. Herman's trying to wind everybody up by saying Pogba, you beauty. Um, don't worry. Uh, we're as live as the comments are. So, uh... Oh, dear. Oh, 
He's Schneidlin now. He's covering the left back position. It's a good tackle by Schneidlin. Right. He, he did do a good tackle there. Yeah. Yeah. That's what you want to see. What I want to see from Schneidlin though is he. I'm I'm still very much looking at how quick he is, and he's not massively. He's about half a yard quicker than Fellaini. I want somebody who's ideally he's a yard Rashford. quick. What? Oh. Here's Rashford. Yeah. T- tackled in the box, but. Ideally, in that defensive midfield position, you want a Kante, Matuidi sort of pace in there. And we haven't really got anybody, which is a bit of a shame. But Martial just Master. telling Rashford to look. Yeah. Okay. Play a, you know what I love about Rashford? Just so much confidence. No fear. In and around the box. He has no fear in the box. He doesn't have any fear at all. But we're, we're moving the ball around nicely. I mean, somebody just said there, how are we doing, you know, it's racing stuff. It's another free kick on Pogba. I, I totally get where people are coming from. Yes, we should be moving the ball around nicely. Yes, we should be winning these sort of games comfortably when you look at the talent on the pitch. But let's not forget where we've come from in relation to how bad we were last year with good talent on the pitch. The fact we've got a new manager, we've got new players, it's going to take a little bit of time. You know, three to six months, we should be saying, yeah, we should be going to Feyenoord with this team and beating them. This is a new team. There's a lot of lack of match Ooh. fitness. That's a decent ball if you can get the header back. Ooh, good defending there. Corner. Is he offside or something? No, offside, offside. Oh, right. There's a nice little dinky cross to the back post area by Herrera. Rojo is offside, we didn't realise. He heads it back across and the Feyenoord player heads it over for a corner, which is what we thought had happened. But we're definitely going toe-to-toe with Feyenoord at the moment, which for a team that is much changed and has got a lot of, uh, you know, a lot of players who haven't played for a while, is very good. Very good. I'm very pleased with the start. And... Uh, it's just, there's just so much to keep an eye on, I think. And I think a lot of you are saying that in the comments as well. It, there is so much to be keeping an eye on. I mean, Kaz Zani Boy says boring football again. I don't know what you want away from home in Holland after 20 minutes. It's, you know, six goals or something. It's not been boring. It's just two fairly evenly matched teams um, trying to get a foothold in the game. And it's, uh, But I'm, I'm not unhappy with the start. Um, we're moving the ball around quite nicely when we get it. We're using the pace that we've got in the attack in the midfield. Um, and the defence doesn't look like it's got any problems as I said before the game and as I'll, I'll say again now it's, it's so difficult Oh, I think Rojo gets lucky there the cross comes in and there that right winger is running in and, and Rojo I think he gets fouled but he didn't look oh, I don't rate Rojo anyway I think he'd give you a goal in any situation yeah come on Martial certainly looks a little bit uh, more more sharper and willing to run which is good his head seems to be in the right place unfortunately Rashford's final ball just isn't with him at the moment which hopefully it will be soon um, Matter coming more central I mean this is the problem I'll tell you what Herrera's got a, he's, he's showing quite great movement as well in this game I've noticed have you not have you noticed that picked up on that well I, oh, he's over here. Herrera's movement yeah yeah for two I mean Herrera I remember when he was at Bill Bauer um, it was Atletico Bilbao I think we bought him from um, yeah, yeah it was he um, he wouldn't be in the team and then he'd come in the team and suddenly be their best player for 10 games and I think hopefully that's what he can do he needs to you know played really well in the second half of the derby he's had a good start to this game yeah a couple, I think I don't, I don't know whether you said this Dan last week um, somebody's definitely said it in the last week that the thing about Herrera is yeah he will play passes and give the ball away but he'll play passes that other people won't play, so it's worth the risk that he takes sometimes because he is trying to make forward. Oh passes. yeah, yeah, yeah. It wasn't me, but um, I, I agree totally with that comment. Yeah, he does give it. He will give it away. But you know, sometimes you, you, you'll, you'll take that because the passes that he picks sometimes will just unlock that defense. And I think, I think it's worth the risk. You have to, you have to give those sort of players that that, that little bit of leeway. Do you know what I mean? Because when they do come up with that with that pass, I tell you what, it's. It could be a winning moment, really. I tell you what, Reese Ward, I'm going to give you a big shout out after Rashford's on the run here. He's going to get caught up from behind there. Um, I should have had a shout that someone was behind him there. Um, oh, who's down now? We've got another player down. 
Her bad it's bloody. It's not Herrera. So that's no, it's matter. It's matter. <laughs> it's horrible when players go down, and you think it's not Herrera. It's not Pogba. It's matter. We could probably do without. <laughs> I don't want matter to be injured by any means, but I think it's like it'll be okay. <laughs> but um, yeah, Reese Ward. He's saying, who were you most excited about when they joined? Verabin, Van Persie, matter, Di Maria. Mine was RVP. Um, we'll answer that at half time. But what I would say, Reese, is you've done three cracking questions today. Um, if you want to send us some questions, send them into uh, soccerboxtv at gmail.com um, because you've been very good tonight and you know we're always happy to to read questions out, especially on our other shows and you know the Sunday show when we're you know got more opportunities. Yeah, and tweet, to do it. and tweet us because I, I could do with some questions as well for the podcast as well. That'd be Obviously handy. The podcast, yeah, yeah, we're getting more. You know, podcast is going to start weekly and we're going to get uh, some. We've got some good guests lined up already, so that's going to be really interesting. But. Um, couple of people on about Memphis. Grey Man says, I hope Depay gets at least 45 minutes. You know what? Again, it's a bit like, um, is there an issue with Memphis coming on second half and not starting this game? It's been very cagey so far. Maybe it would suit Memphis better to come on in the second half or the last half an hour anyway, where it's a bit more, there's a bit more going on. What I would say is that Feyenoord are a very, very, very dirty side. They are playing a lot of fouls. Diamond's oh, got no one to pass to here. Oh, Ooh, Martial just wide. Damien with the cross picked him out on the edge of the box. Probably should have scored, but it, it's a chance. It looks like it might be a court. No, it's not. I'll tell you what, though. His head looks up now, doesn't it? I mean, it's been, it's been down in the last few matches, but he seems to be refocused now, Martial. It's a good cross by Damien. He's done about as much as he can do from there because he can't really get his foot around it. But it's a good, 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 good play. Random Ryu says, I bet these two have never seen Man U. Yeah. Okay, all right. Well, you feel well, no comment on that because I've seen them plenty of times. <laughs> I mean, what hopefully we'll see in the next 10 minutes is uh, is everybody getting a bit more confident on the ball. They're so dirty, Feyenoord. They're every, every little time they get the ball. They're giving a little kick out. I don't know whether anyone else has seen this, but they're they're really dirty. Yeah, they are. They're probably getting stuck in. But we are starting to Don't take ride. hold on the game, and I think that's probably why they are. Don't worry, boy, we're getting back. I seem to remember Feyenoord being dirty in the past, though. And I remember when we played, it was PSV last year, and I know Luke Shaw did his, uh, did his um, famously, unfortunately for Luke, did his shin in on what was a horrific tackle. Another classic Roy Keane saying it was a good tackle. But I remember, I remember saying the same thing. They're really dirty. Maybe it's the Dutch league. They're just, they are dirty. Yeah, I remember that. They've done, they, they done, they done Luke Shaw's uh, leg. And um, and he did Memphis really for the rest of the season. It was weird after that game. He just he didn't he never got back into it, did he? I don't know if he was upset. Cause I, I know him and Luke tried had a good connection on the left hand side, but he just seemed to never get back into it after that. No, you're right. He didn't. It was uh, you know it was only a few short games, wasn't it? But they did have a really yeah. good connection going on. Uh, you know, yeah, I suppose it's just the way it is, isn't it? Some leagues are more competitive and dirty. That's a cracking tackle by Bay there. Striker's just about to hit it, and he and he blocks it, and United are on the break again. It's nearly a good ball by Pogba. Rashford's not going to quite get there. Yeah, Pogba's taking hold of that midfield. I'd just like to see Herrera is getting stuck in in this match. I'm loving it. Yeah, and you know what? It it is gradually getting better, and I just don't that, understand what people's. Sort of reservation is really. There's no magic wand that we're suddenly going to start playing scintillating football. It will take time. You know, players have got to get used to playing with each other, etc. But we're doing okay. We're doing okay. We're uh, there's a lot of good signs out there. And as I said, playing Feyenoord away is probably the equivalent of playing someone like Stoke. They're not. You know, they're not. This isn't a bad league. I mean, it's not. It's not Real Madrid or Bayern, Bayern Munich by any means. But they're not a bad side. They're well experienced in Europe. 
And, they and let's not let's not have short term memory loss. Let's let's this you know people keep forgetting what the last two years were. Yeah, this is okay. So it's, it's not perfect right now, but it's a hell of a lot better than what it was. Uh, don't copy remember. my name, Low LL says Martial is a good all round player, but he can't finish well. I tell you what, throw us some comments about who you think's doing well, who you think's not, what you think's not doing so well, because. Uh, my personal feelings would be that, as Dan has said, Herrera's getting stuck in and, yeah, he's giving the ball away a couple of times, but there's lots of intent. Pogba seems to be sort of feeling his way into the game. I think Pogba's big problem at the moment is just match fitness. Um, getting Bay having a really good game. Um, and everybody else probably haven't seen... It. There's definitely a, a step up in Martial's performances. And uh, some people are saying he should have scored that chance, but... You know, maybe he should, maybe he shouldn't, but his actual overall game is far better and he's playing with a much more effort and desire, which, you know, people can knock Jose, but that's what you will get from players under Jose. They, they, he won't have any laziness or head down or, you know, not interested. You play for him, you, you put the effort in, and we can see that. Yep. Uh, what's that? Pretty good. Uh, the email was soccerboxtv at gmail.com um, Martial is a waste says Mohamed Adil I disagree we need a new striker says Kieran Smith Pogba hasn't really? settled in that's why he's not playing as well as he used to don't copy my name lol says um, I think it, the problem with Pogba is he had a month off on holiday sunning it up in America and he's probably about three weeks behind everybody else once his yeah, fitness all... levels go up when he gets match fitness, like you gotta remember, again, as you said, they he went all the way to the final and he had, he had the, the longest holiday I've ever seen a footballer have. So, you know, give him and remember we're only in September, the season only started last season last last month, so you know, give him give him a bit of time. I mean, what I would say is a shout out to Bay is that he's playing alongside Chris Smalling and I'm a big fan of Chris Smalling and I know he's gotta play his way in and everything like that. But when you look at them playing next to each other, you can just pick up on who's the better player and stuff like that. And he does look like he's, you know, commanding his position. That's nice play by Pogba to Rashford. Mata won't have the pace to get away, but he might have the skill to keep hold of it. Darmian with the cross. Rashford again. His first touch isn't quite with him at the moment. He needs to sort out his final ball. Yeah, he's, I was going to say, his final ball's really lacking at the moment. Schneiderlin did well to win that back. I'm... I just don't know about Schneidlin. I'm going to put it out there. I just do not know. Another foul on Martial. I'm going to give Kenneth Schneidlin the benefit of the doubt because he's clearly not been playing a lot. But it, just, it doesn't look as if it's a big enough pace increase in that position to Fellaini. And we need pace in that position. That's a lovely little flat by Mata. Oh. I'm going to lose it though. I'd say we're definitely the team on top and and again don't underestimate we are playing away from home um with a, with a team that's not really played together and, at all and i'd say we're more than holding our own which is exactly you know it's as much as you can hope for rem rme online says people have to remember most of this team is not match fit a lot of players playing first game good point uh, suarez would buy Hamez and Griezmann and a good centre-back. I, I, I do think, although we've made some fantastic signings this summer, we, we only bought four. We've not got rid of any experienced players. I, don't, I think the job is halfway done um, in relation to signings and getting rid of people. Um, Johnny Blaze giving a shout-out for Carrick. He's our Perlo. I'm, you know, I love Carrick. Um, I, I noticeably saw that he was on the decline last year, but I still think he can do a job for us. And it surprises me that he's not really been involved at all but we don't see what goes on in training maybe he's declined a lot more over the summer Sanchez says Carrick and Perlo in the same sentence question mark another good break of the play by Herrera there and he finds his mate Mata I mean that's one thing Herrera straight into the back of Rashford there you've got to give the foul I think the referee needs to start putting a few yellow cards out because it's just rough it's rough tactics he's gone straight through the back of him He's like, no way can he make that tackle. It should be I'm surprised card. there's been no yellows. I'm, I'm really surprised there's been none yet. There has been no. one. I don't know who got it, but there has been one yellow card. But, but they are they are really starting to take, take, take the mick now with the tackles. They're just they're dirty. They're dirtier than a tramp sock. 
You know, I think what it is, they can, you know, you can clearly see now we're starting to take control of this game, having in intricate passes here and there. They're you know, starting, starting to chase a bit of shadow. And again. Oh, again, neck. it's got to give a yellow card. He's, he's done it twice, the same player on the same player, and he's not booking him. And Rashford's like looking up saying, what what, what has to happen? And what's getting on my nerves is we're going to pick up some injuries in this because they are, they are late they're going through the back of us all the time. And it's very, very reminiscent of PSV last year where we've got a soft referee. He's not. He's, he's even given up giving fouls now because he's given so many. I mean, that was another foul for me. It just it frustrates me because I don't, I don't want us to pick up injuries in this tournament at all. But you're always dictated to by who the ref is. And some European refs are just absolute pants. And unfortunately, we had one in Holland last year against PSV. And... We've got another one here. Although he's given a lot know, of free kicks. Just... He's given a lot of free kicks, but what he needs to do is start yeah, giving start a few throwing the books. Yeah. Because yeah. I'll tell you now, we, we do one tackle and we'll probably get the first yellow card. It's just yeah. ridiculous. Well, I, I know they'll have one, but still. Decent cross in, but uh, it's just ahead of Rashford. I'll tell you what, Bai, uh, he, he runs right up that pitch. Just snuffs it out. I, I love that guy, man. He's, to me, he's, he's at the moment, he has our signing of the summer because he just epitomises Manchester United, that passion, drive. We were talking about Roy Keane before the game, and I'm not saying Bay is Roy Keane, but he has that attitude within him where it's like he wants to win, He's strong, he's passionate, and uh, he's not a quitter. Um, yeah. I don't know. I suppose it's an interesting thing, and I don't know whether we've got many people watching from uh, Africa. I know we've got uh, somebody from South Africa because I saw that before, but we haven't got an amazing history at Manchester United of African players. Um, I know the likes of, obviously, Drogba at Chelsea, very good winning attitude, um, and maybe... It, Maybe his background in the Ivory Coast and his journey to being a footballer has instilled that fight in him. I certainly know a lot about Roy Keane. Um, I, I saw his debut for Forest against uh, Liverpool when I was a kid. And um, he was uh, a fantastic player who'd come through the non-league and had a great attitude on the pitch. And maybe maybe that's the key with Bay. You know, he's not had a silver spoon in his mouth, which a lot of British players get from a very young age. But he's, you know, if he could bottle his attitude and, and his desire for the game, it's it's perfect, absolutely perfect. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Now, he's, he just seems very driven, just determined to win. He's, he's, he's just a, he's an athlete. You can just tell. Like he's, just, he's just a winner. So, um, he's just all, look, he's just always really, look, straight away, bang. Yeah. And he will he's pick up yellow really cards. He, will, he yeah. will pick up yellow cards, won't he? Because he can be rash because of that desire, but he's young. Um, Bayou says he's from Nigeria. Jay Jemba Jemba, yeah, I, I purposely put him to the back of my mind. I was trying to think of a good. <laughs> I was trying to think of a good example. Um, yeah, maybe Jemba Jemba had the right attitude and desire. He just didn't have any footballing ability. You've got to have that as, as well. Here's Pogba with it, a bit of space ahead of him. He needs to either run at his man and lose the ball as he has done there. A um, bit of a shame because he could have fed Martial. I'm relaxed about Pogba. You know what? He's not having a fantastic game again, but he's a top player and maybe his head's not there. You know, who knows? But he is a top player. Who's that? Pogba. Sorry, mate. I was just sorting out my kids as well. <laughs> um, what, what was the point that you was making that he's just, he's just not No, he just gave the, the ball moment. away there and there's a people, few people saying Pogba, FFS, which you all know what that stands for. Um all right. But it I just, just yeah, go on. No, I was just gonna say like oh. obviously from hang on, from from isolate from isolating standpoint you could be like, Oh come on, what's he doing? But the things that he's doing okay, he's not even at full potential, but you can already see the difference that he's bringing to the midfield. We don't have that sort of Rolls Royce player that's running with his you know, chest open and strolling for the midfield and he's starting to bring essence of that already. Are they trying to get a penny out of that, really? He's rubbish this ref. Really rubbish. Martial just skipped past one player. It's going to go past another. Held the ball up and basically got assaulted. And uh, the ref's sort of like... I think because he's probably bottling it because he's having to give so many free kicks to United. Um, he's yeah. sort of given us one in two now. 
which is if he'd booked somebody, I know he's booked somebody, but he needs to book somebody else because if he'd done that, Feyenoord would have to stop these dirty tactics, or they're going to get they're going to be down to ten men very oh, quickly. I'm lucky there, Matt. We're in the ascendancy. It's a difficult game. Um, opinions on Pogba so far, Mark says Kieran. Well, Dan's just talking about him a bit there. It's not fantastic. It isn't fantastic, but he 100% needed to play today because the only way Pogba's going to improve is by playing games. You know, Pogba falls into that category of Rooney, really. Um, he's our record signing. He's Pogba's he's Jose signing. He's got, he's got to play. So we've got to play him into form. I think a lot of it comes down to fitness. Um, he ain't playing that great at the moment, but persevere with him. Persevere with him. Matthew Keek, thank you for doing this live stream. We do them every game. We'll be back on Sunday at 12 o'clock. Uh, I think it's 12 o'clock kickoff, so we'll be live from 11. We love doing the watch-alongs. We started off doing them, and you people said that you wanted to do more. I think it's great that United fans can all uh, join in when there's a game and have their thoughts and talk about not only the game, but other things that are bothering us. I mean, I, I, we've, we've all watched United for years, and you know sometimes you're sat there watching it on your own and you're pulling your head out, hair out with it with your own thoughts, watch along. You can all get involved and, and listen to what everyone else is thinking. I think it's a great concept and uh, we certainly love doing it and we'll keep doing it the more you people interact and want us to do it. So thanks everybody for joining. Massive shout out for you lot as per usual. And uh, please do drop us a like and subscribe to the United Stand. It's free if you're new, if you stumbled on us. I know a lot of people do when we're doing the lineups. Eco's not happy. He's putting up did big Zs. I, I don't agree. I don't agree. I'll ask what Dan thinks and you lot as well. This is not Louis van Gaal boring football. We're away from home in Europe with a much changed side, and I think we're on top. Yeah, it's not it's not Louis van Gaal football. Um, yeah, we're away from home, and also you have to remember this 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 referee. Yeah, if he, he needs to he needs to buck up his ideas because he's not even given the he's not giving out these yellows. I think that will change the dynamic of the game, um, and just open up more. I think if he starts giving yellows. We will stop. Um, they will stop coming in it's so much, open up even more space for us. But at the moment, I feel like the, the referee isn't doing the, the greatest um, job at the moment either. No, if they if they weren't if Feyenoord weren't playing so di dirty, we'd be all over them in this game. Um, because they wouldn't be they wouldn't be able to get away with what they're doing. So we're trying to play football, and every time we receive the ball, they're going through the back of us. The kick in and all that sort of stuff. I mean, to be fair, Pogba and Herrera have sort of decided they're going to start throwing in a few tasty tackles as well. But oh, that won't do Darmian any favours. He got absolutely minced there. Darmian haters will uh, will be on him for that. He did get he did get done. To be honest, but, you know, Ramsey United straight on it. Steve Buckley says ten forty tonight. ITV. I think that's the highlights show. Any subs in the second half, says Amelina Yusuf. Um, I think it would be unfair to start saying anybody's done badly and needs subbing. I, I think we will make substitutions um, for a couple of reasons. One, we've got Watford on Sunday. Two, there's a couple of players on our bench who, who probably need some game time. I mean, ideally, I don't know how it will happen, but ideally I would like to see Memphis, obviously, um, getting some game time. I would like to see uh, Fozu Menza get some game time. And I would like to see Carrick get some game time, but you could say you could argue the same for Young. Um, the other two substitutions are Zlatan and Fellaini. Who, to be honest, do we really need to see them playing? They're probably going to play on Watford. Give them a rest. Well, yeah, give Zlatan a rest. We shouldn't need Zlatan in this match. We're not being funny. We've got the players to come along and win this. Um, so yeah, give them a rest. You know, I think him. Especially, I know we don't we like we don't really harp about his age, but at the end of the day, he is an, he is an older player. We pay him in the key matches, and for me, the key matches are the Premier League. That's when that's when we need him mainly. Um, to be fair, I'd have put even more youth out today, and it's not just because I don't want to win the Europa League. But I think our youth can handle it. I, I just think they can. And you know, Rashford's showing that he can handle the the prime time. So that's what that's what I would have done. But. What do I know? <laughs> no, I'm listening to you, Dan. Don't worry. I was just uh, sort of no, no, no. I wasn't referring to you. I was just saying, what? You know, that's just. I'm just ranting because I, I think I need a goal now. 
yeah, we do. You know, football is. I was talking to somebody today because I had to drive up to uh, with work, and um, it's football is so funny. And I, I will mention this because it is it is very true. Football is so funny. You know, some people go to football, and um, we the person I was with today was saying, you know, you go to football matches, and some fans are just there to be positive and back their team. And some some fans will have a preconception about who their favourite player is and who who they don't like, no matter who how how well they do. You could think about me with Fellaini, couldn't you? You know, if he scores a goal, I'll say it's a tap in, and it was dead easy. So it is it is interesting. And I suppose, but I, the long point is that you know Dan's saying we need a goal there, and I, I'm sure if we go in at nil nil down, there'll be a lot of people saying, oh, it's been a boring half. For me personally, I've really enjoyed it. I think. It's a really difficult game. I think Feyenoord are really dirty. They're really up for it. And, uh, you know, we've got a team of players that we want to see playing. We want to see them playing. We want to see them get some match fitness. And we're trying really hard. But it's hard. They're up against a, a tough referee, a very tough side. But I think on the balance, we've been the better side. Um, I think a goal would be nice to reward the work they've done in this half. But I certainly don't agree with people who are saying it's... Uh, it's been boring or anything like that. I think we've we've done okay. No, it's not. It's not. It's not that boring. When I say we need a goal, I just feel like we got the play there. I really think like once once these players start getting a bit a few bookings, I feel like they're going to come off us, and our and our, our passes will lead to a goal. So it's 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 a mixture of all things. But we haven't played that bad. We haven't played that bad. And you always have to remember when you're playing away from home, especially in Europe, it's always going to be like this. You know, we're not playing end-to-end football like we're playing Real Madrid or something like this. This is just, you know, it's not it's not going to be like that. So you have to sometimes understand exactly who we're playing and where and where we're playing. This is, we're not playing at Old Trafford. If we're playing at Old Trafford and we're playing like this, I can understand people's um, people's frustrations even more so. There's a cracking comment here for Dan. I don't want to embarrass him, but let me just read it out. Um, Sword four thousand YouTube says, "Look, I'm into the guy on the right. He turns me on. Well, you're the one on my right." Uh, yeah, well, I've got many fans. <laughs> 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 That's all I say to that. Whatever floats your boat. Takes all sorts. That's it, mate. <laughs> I see that's a Darmian. Right, Darmian, see if you can cross now. You can. Oh! There's nearly a chance there. Pogba heading it down, and it's Mata getting into those positions. He's got good stats. So we're approaching half time. Um, I'm not, yeah. As I said, it'd be lovely to have had a goal to be have something to talk about. But I'm not, I'm not, I'm not disappointed by it. I think it's a very, very difficult circumstances. Very, very difficult. Um, I don't think the referees helped. And I think in the second half, hopefully, it will open up a bit more and we will get more opportunity to to have a go at them. But there's still players struggling for fitness. Um, Pogba's one. Schneidlin for me is I wouldn't say he's been woeful but he's 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 not at the races but you can forgive that um Smalling there's something about Smalling that just doesn't look right he's not done anything wrong he just doesn't look right but that's probably because he's not been playing games um you, what you what I'm looking at when I'm talking about these players Darmian Smalling Schneidlin and um, is are they doing enough to dislodge Blind Valencia and um Fellaini and I'll be a bl- I'll be going to be bluntly honest with you, none on all three. I don't know what you think, Dan, or all my live comments. Um, no comment. Yeah, yeah. I'll refer that to the comments first. I've lost my train of thought. So let me just stop that. Stop the clock. Nothing is happening, says Atul. Uh, this just. Well, Roy Saxon's not happy. Um, let's 
excuses, excuses. Man United not lacking fitness but Pogba skill, invisible. says Tom Sport. Pogba invisible, says Epic Toaster Fish. He's not Fe- playing that bad. <laughs> Feyenoord played better in the first half, says Ishmael. Disagree with that, mate. Uh, United players get upset and fragile mentally if they get criticism from fans and manager, says HR. Very insightful. I can't tell whether that's true. Biggest forehead in the world, says Tom Sports. Thank you. Um, Sideman says he loves me, so that's all that matters. Radford, Rashford plays better on the left wing, Unfor- says Johan. Unfortunately, we've, if that's true, we've got a massive, massive problem then, haven't we? Because Martial plays better on the left wing, as does Memphis, and we can only play one. Dylan Hogan, ref needs a red card. I think he does need a red card adding to his uh, back pocket because he clearly hasn't got one. Um, Shanula5, 51 YouTube, wants a shout-out. Better signing Pogba or Abramovic, says Matthew Keek. Way too early for me to sort of talk about that. A um, few of you saying who's been the player of the half so far. Um, uh, it would be Herrera or Bay for me. Um, Herrera, Dan spotted it first. He is playing with dynamism. He is taking risks. He is closing down. He's doing everything that you'd want to do. And Bay is just Bay. He plays with the right attitude. He's passionate. He's fast. Um, yeah, I think both of them have done well. I don't think anybody. I wouldn't say anybody's done really bad. I just don't think Schneider and Darmian and Smalling have done enough to make me think on that half that they should be dislodging what we've already got. Which is a shame because I'd like all three of them to dislodge Valencia, Blind, and uh, Fellaini, but they haven't been at the races. You've got to be honest. Martial's much improved. Rashford's final touch and ball has been a bit off. Matters matter. Um, Pogba, I think, is just still struggling for pace. Rojo's not really done much. Um, and that's that's it. So I would go with Herrera and Bay as my players of the half. I think they've, they've done it. But a lot of you saying boring. I disagree with that. I think it's difficult circumstances. A weak referee. A decent final team. We're away from home. We've made a lot of changes. We're not being embarrassed. We're well in the game. I think we're the better side in the game. And I, I think we'll win it in the second half. Over to you, Dan. Yeah, I, I, I think I think we're going to improve in the second. You know what it is? I feel I feel like when we're coming towards the end of the about twenty about twenty twenty fifth minute to thirty fifth minute, we've really starting to click into gear now. I think you know who will I change? I'll, I'll probably still throw on someone like Memphis. I think just just another bit more injection in, in, in pace, really, just a bit of dynamism. I don't. I don't feel like they. I don't think they're going to carry on the same way they did in the second half. In in, in terms of the opposition, I feel like their manager might say to them, you know, slow down. And and and, and Jose started saying that as well to his players. He didn't, I don't know if he saw it, but he was like, look, calm down. So I think now we're just going to really just go out there and start attacking. You know, after we lost that, we lost at City. They won't. They won't want to go for a draw in this match. I think we're going to really go for it in the second half now, um, despite being being away. Uh, would I make a sub straight away? Probably would, to be fair. I don't think Matt deserves to come off, but I just, again, feel like we need pace down that right. Yeah, um, it's probably the only sub I would make. I'll come back to that in a minute because there's some good comments going on. JPH78SK says playing too narrow. Um, David Webster says, sorry, Mark, I think you're talking bollocks. We're playing shit again. No sharpness at all. Brilliant comment, David. I'm not... No, we never say our opinions are right. It's just opinions, and we definitely want your opinion. So if that's what you feel, that's right. You're not in the minority. I just disagree. Terry S says we need to press the back four as a team and not Rashford on his own. Good point. Faharam says there's no synergy. I said synergy. Um, Jordan says Rojo equals Wood. Johnny Blaze 23. Mark, we're playing like we're scared to lose. Uh, and a few people disappointed. I'm going to come back to more because there's some good comments in there. I just want to say very quickly, uh, there's over a thousand of you watching. We've got 434 likes. If you could all hit like now, let's see if we can get over a thousand at half time. We normally do that, so please do hit the like button. Um, subscribe to the United Stand, please. It's free if you are new because we do daily uploads, and if you subscribe, you'll get notifications of those uploads. So please do subscribe and get involved. Sunday Night Live at half past eight is our big interactive show, a weekend review. So um, that's a big shout out for that show. And also, we're in the Football Blogging Awards at Old Trafford um, in November. We won Best New Vlog, we're up for Best Fan Channel and Best club vlog the video description has got the two links if you're on twitter if you could just click those tweet out the thing it takes five seconds and you've it'll make a massive difference if we can make it as a finalist so brilliant uh, please do those threes like the video subscribe to the channel and, and vote for us it will take a few seconds and it means a lot because we're nothing without you 
everything with you. And onto that, Sam Law says, totally disjointed team. Interesting how fans, we are saying that a few minutes ago, how fans see different things. Doesn't make one right or one wrong. We all have our own fan favourites, our own theories, but we definitely all see the game very differently because, as I said, Sam, the way I'm looking at it, we're on top, just the referee is very poor um, and we're just not able to get any flow because they are purposely going through the back of us and, and breaking up the play with fouls that the referee isn't always giving. So it's very hard for us to get any flow going. Um, it happened in PSV last year, a weak referee, and they just, I wouldn't even call it bullying, they assaulted us and it is going on in this. So it is disjointed, you're right, but we're up against difficult circumstances. Um, Ibra should come on, says Austin. I don't know, I don't know. I, don't, I think we get ahead, we, we win the game. Um, need for Lane needs to throw some elbows. We don't need any new players. If we can manage this one, we can win anything. Um, first half was great, says Trinidad Manchester United Unlimited. Could be sarcasm, could be true. Um, we still haven't got a style of play, says Alvin Hay, which is a good point. Uh, it is a good point, but it's going to take time. Like I said, there's no magic wand. Harry Potter's not walking in and going boom, or whatever he does say. I'm trying to think of a Harry Potter one. Um, very poor, Mark. You are delusional, says Nikhil. I'm getting all the stick tonight. Uh, 300 yacht foot yachts. Dan is blind. Dan is blind, your favourite player, says Jesse Pinkman. Uh, absolutely not. Um, the reason I'm going to pop for a minute. I'll be back and scare for a toilet break. Nah, that's cool. Nah, he's not, he's not my favourite player. It's just that when we signed him, um, it was the same year we signed, was it Falcao and, and Di Maria? And I didn't want to buy that, that shirt because everyone would have it. So I thought I'd be a bit niche and get the blind one. Um, what else? Anyone else got any questions for me? You're all idiots if you... Uh, Blind 17 is good. This is Games Crew. Mark, we are too slow. Come on, give us some comments, guys. We're not sorry, prize make with crap. Awful game. I don't think it, you know we haven't been. We haven't been. We're not. We're not. We haven't been awful. All right, we're away. We're away from home. First European game in the season. We haven't been awful at all. You know, we're not. We're not. We're not. We're not amazing. We haven't been awful. You look at the uh, highlights now. If you're watching it, you know, Rashford's final touch isn't normally that that poor. Um, so I think you know, second half, I reckon, despite how. Dan, we are playing too slow. Absolutely. Um, I mean, I feel we are playing slow. That's why I sacrificed Matt. I don't think he's done anything wrong. But I just feel like he's probably... You know how he got he got suffered for being the smallest man on the pitch? I suffer for being one of the slowest right now. Get some more pace on the right. How do you think Man United will line up with Griezmann? You know what? I think Griezmann will be the replacement for Rooney long term. That's my, that's my dream. I can dream. I dreamed about Pogba coming and then he came, so... <laughs> What a what a sentence to put it back. I dreamt about Pogba coming and he came. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, hey, guess, People might not get that. You have to work your toes. I know. That was the first thing I heard when I came back from Dan. I was hoping I Pogba came did. and he came. <laughs> no comment. I think some of them got it. Yeah. He's been watching too many of those David Lloyd adverts. Um, <laughs> they're good. <laughs> yeah, yeah. They're decent. They're not bad. <laughs> Just, they're just no. showing to the chances back there. Sorry, go on, go on down. No, that's all right. I was going to say, that, you know, they're saying this is it's a really poor performance, but I don't, I don't think it's a poor performance. I'm saying it's our first game away in Europe as well. You know, it's, it is different. You know, despite people, a lot of people say it's not. They say football's football. I'm telling you, if, well, you know anyway, Mark. European football is a different kind of fish to uh, the Premier League. It is. Um. The referee is different, the way they're playing, and they're, they're really getting stuck in and, and so on down. So I think, for me, it's not a bad first half away and a first game in Europe. No, and I, I wouldn't bring on, I wouldn't bring on Ibra either. Sorry, I wouldn't bring him on yet. I wouldn't bring him on yet. I don't, just don't think we need to. I, I agree. I think you know we've been in Europe for many years, Champions League mainly, and you go to places like Holland um, and away to you know Russia and you know not fantastically great sides. But we don't go there and win four or five nil. That's not that's not how it works in Europe. You know, these are teams that have got good support. They're their home ground. They know what to do. You get a weak referee. Um, I'm not saying Feyenoord are on a decent football team as well. I think, you know, as I said before, I think they're on par with somebody like Stoke. So it's not a given 
Um, and I think when you take into that in, all into account, we ain't doing too bad. We ain't doing too bad. Um, I don't care if people like Dodoran wants to say excuses, excuses, Pogba's overrated. He was overvalued. We paid 30 million probably too much for him. But that was we either did that or we didn't get him. Because believe me, we have no right to make that Pogba sign in. If we'd have offered 50, Real Madrid would have bitten their hands off and took the deal. So for us to get him, we had to pay too much. Strap a toilet brick. No worries. But he's a decent player and he will get better. I've got no concerns about him. I'll put my hands up like most of you have and say he's not doing enough at the moment. But I think so much of that comes down to the fact that he had a month off when everybody else was training pre-season. Um, and he needs to get his fitness up, which is why it was so important that he played today. But, uh, you know, you know what what I was like last season. And you know I will be negative if I think there's a reason to be negative. But I'm not negative about this performance. Um, I think there's so many players getting game time, which is important. And we are not... In, under any threat of losing this game doesn't mean we won't lose it because anything can happen in football but by no means are we being embarrassed um, and I think you cannot underestimate the fact that every time we're trying to play a pass or someone's got a back to the ball they're coming through the back and we're either getting a free kick which is right and, and it slows up the play and they get people behind the ball again or the ref's not giving a free kick so it's very hard to get any flow in um, we could sign Messi for 100 and people would complain he didn't have a hat-trick every game, says Yanks are coming. Uh, we're letting them see too much of the ball. We need to get more possession if we want to win this game, says Kyle. Santuan, good point, but it's hard to keep possession when you're getting fouled all the time. Um, it needs a strong ref and it makes you know, referees can make such a difference on a game. Kapinga says hi. Hi, mate. Uh, Man City the best, says Klazatron. Memphis needs time on the pitch. Manny G, I fully expect him to get some. John IRT, not seen him all night. How about trying to keep possession for five minutes? Just sitting back isn't helping us. Our players are pretty good at keeping the ball. Too much pointless. And then I've, he skipped off there. But there was a couple of times, I definitely remember in the first few minutes, around five minute mark, we had a good bit of possession. I would like to see more of that. I would agree with that. Um, Shane Lim, what do you guys think Man United is playing without Rooney? I don't miss Rooney. I wouldn't miss Rooney if he never played for Manchester United again. He will. Um, because he's always going to get picked when he wants to get picked. But I don't I don't think we're missing Rooney. I mean, I don't know what you lot think, but uh, I really don't think we are. Jamie O'Hare, positivity. We like this. This team will click very soon. Just wait. I think it will. Uh, I think it will. We've got a brand new referee. A brand new referee. I wish we did. We've got a brand new manager. A lot of new players. It's going to take time. Um, Lee 2E, very good point. Rashford and Marshall getting kicked to shit, and it's affecting their game. Too, very too. Josh Fricker, stop blaming the ref, Mark. I very rarely blame the referee. In fact, I said on Sunday night that watching that penalty on uh, that Klattenberg missed at the weekend, I understood why he missed it. I thought it wasn't blatant. It wasn't obvious. It was. When you watch it back, it was two-footed and it should have been a penalty. But I understand why he didn't give it. So I don't I don't blame referees. So, um, But I think this referee is shocking. But it's not unusual in Europe. Um, referees in our country would have stamped this out. Too slow at the moment, says Steve Buckley. Yeah. Mark, what hate do you have with Rooney? I don't know. That's from OMG Ricky. I don't hate Rooney. I don't miss him in a Manchester United team. I wouldn't miss him if he left Manchester United. I genuinely think he's on the decline. And I think there are better options in our team. I don't hate Rooney. He's been a fantastic servant to the club. Um, it's one of the best players I've ever seen England produce when he first burst on the scene. Fantastic player. Um, but everyone has a shelf life and I think his, he's coming to the end of his and I think it's causing his problems. That's the truth. So it's, I've got no hate for him. It's just an opinion on a footballer. Um, Muller91 saying Zlatan in for useless matter. I feel sorry for matter. I think he should, if he's playing at number 10, you see a different matter. As a right midfielder, as Dan said, he isn't one. Um, we're coming out for the second half. Mark. I've missed it. It's whizzed by. Brings Latan on for Mata. Put Rashford on the right. Says Mefta. Not a bad call. Um, Muller91 with another good comment. Rojo is a League 2 player. Yo Combo says, People who say Pogba is overrated haven't ever watched him at Juventus, which is very true. And Juventus, as we know, are a very good team in Europe. And if he was playing for Juventus last season in this sort of game, he'd probably be doing really well. The issue at the moment is lack of match fitness and getting used to the team that he's playing in. He will come good. Pogba will come good. Don't worry about it. Uh, Dan's back with us. I don't think there's any subs in the second half, Dan. Um, if you were going to make a sub at some point, what would you be thinking? Yeah, what I was saying when you when you when you when you nipped off, I wouldn't 
he doesn't deserve to be subbed, and I already sacrificed him because of his, sl his slowness, his matter. Um, and that's just tactically. You know how he, he got subbed because he was he was uh, too small? I'll do the same thing for his speed, mate, because I still think down that right, we're, we're, we're lacking place and we're quite lopsided. If we can go at them at both sides with, with pace, we're, we're, we're about this game up quickly, I think. Yeah. Um, Pog was just worked up to Doik Kite and uh, tapped him on the back and had some nice pleasantries. Shame it wasn't on his face and push him over. Liverpool scum. <laughs> uh, I mean it. Um, I'm a Oi, how annoyed does Memphis look on that bench? Well, he should be happy to be on the bench. He hasn't even been on it the last few games, has he? So uh, it's uh, it's not too bad. Right, the timer should be up. Yeah, we're up. And we're off for the second half. So sink in with us, get involved. And it's Herrera as per usual. He has a shot. Why not? Have a shot. But yeah, I don't know. I don't know. I can't remember what you said, Dan. But for me, the, the two players, Herrera and Bay, were the standout players from that half. Anybody else? No, no I, I said the exact same thing. To be fair, it's, don't know what. If it was down, if it's the end, if the match ended now. I struggle to say who would made the match out of those two. But they have clearly been the two standout ones for us, hands down. Yeah, I agree. I mean, I'm just looking at Bay there. He, I, it must just be a jarred knee because he definitely is running with a limp. Oh, yeah, he is. You've gone black and white, Dan. What's that? He is. Yeah, he is, he is definitely running with a limp. But to be fair, it can't be. It can't be nothing too crazy because nothing too bad because obviously he would have been brought off. So yeah. Well, it's medical. You know, medical experts know what they're on about, don't they? And. Uh, uh, but he seems like he seems like the kind of player that even if he has got a niggle, he will keep going on. Yeah. Oh, that was a nice bit of defending there by him as well. I mean, you should never say it until the game's over. But Bay has had their centre forward in his back pocket. He has. He has all game long. All game long. I mean that's interesting there. I mean we just saw a real contrast there. The centre forward sort of um, receiving the ball, but it was Smalling going to him this time. And the difference between when the strength forward receives it and Bay's behind him, and the, and the, when Smalling's behind him, Smalling's coming behind him, not literally, that'd be disgusting, and sort of you know sort of holding him off. Whereas Bay's coming right through the back of him, not in a fouling way, knocking him off the ball and getting the ball. And and that is a big difference. Uh, this, I said it in the first half, one thing I've really noticed and I really wanted to watch that centre-back partnership is that as things stand at the moment, um, and whether it's because Smalling needs a bit more game time or whatever or confidence, Bay is so obviously the better centre-back at this time. How come my camera's gone back and white? I just realised that. I know, I thought you were going for a bit of an artistic look. Nah, I just, it's just, I don't know, it's, it's my light's off, I don't know, let me have a quick look, hang on. It's a bit strange. I think it looks quite nice and artistic, but uh, yeah, if you've not done it on purpose. Mighty Spyro saying, how do you think Manchester United would line up with Griezmann? Um, well, I don't know. He could, he could play in any position uh, along the front three, really. Jesse's noticed that he's gone... Uh, Black and white. Pogba. Goal kick. Oh, you're back again in colour. Do you know what I don't it know was? If that's uh, it's yeah, lighting. it sounds stupid, but it's my light. <laughs> the Russo says better done. Cool. I, don't, I haven't noticed uh, Mad Mark on the Mad Marcus on the comments tonight. Maybe he is. Maybe yeah. He wasn't. It was there. It was there. Yeah. 
we need a goal in this game. Let's be honest. Let's focus on the game a little bit. We do need a goal. Um, I'm, I'm, you know, a lot of you are very critical about that first half. I, I just think, you know, I said this. I think I was on Fan TV the other night, and I said it. You know, there's a massive hangover with Manchester United from the last three years, really. And it's not one pint too many. You're a bit blurry headed. It's 20 Jager bombs and a bottle of red wine. It's a big hangover to get over. And I think some fans have it as well. I think we're we're being a bit too negative. I think you've just got to scrub that out of your mind and think these couple of things. We've bought a lot of new players. This, there's a lot of players on this pitch as well today. It's their first real game. And we've got a brand new manager. And you can't expect things to just click within the first few games. It very rarely happens. But the great thing is we have been grinding out results. City apart, we you know we won three from three. So this it's going to take a bit of time. But the, the comment at half-time was spot on. Um, I forget by the name who did it that at some point we will click because Jose I mean Pogba's not doing himself any favours he's lost the ball there but it's just not fit he's just he's not fit his touch isn't right and the only way he's going to get it is by playing games I mean that's that's Pogba for you there he's got players all around him and he takes a shot but you can tell he's not happy and that's good that's what you want to see Memphis warming up yeah thank god <laughs> I know I sound like a Memphis entourage here, but I just, re I just really think he could do something. And um, I'm trying to be a bit of mystic Meg here, but I, I just think he can shine. I remember, and I, you know, I don't know if you remember, Mark, I remember when he first signed, I, I thought I sort of said, I think you said it as well, that I wouldn't be surprised if he won the PFA that year or Young, Players, P Young Player of the Year. Didn't do it though. Um, but I still think he has that potential, and I just think just give him game time and he'll do it. Um, for me, if he comes on, he can get a goal. Do you like Tennis. bacon, Dan? Hey. Do you like bacon? Why is that? Because you seem to love everything Danish, Blind, Memphis. <laughs> yeah. Well, well, Blind. Now I don't love Blind. He's all right. As I said, as I said to the people when you went away, the only reason why I got Blind because. Um, on my shirt that year when we got Falcao and Di Maria, I thought I thought everybody would get them on their shirt, so I got Blin just to be a bit different. Um, not a puppy. Chris Beaver, so. obviously regular on the United Stand, he's saying that he's expecting it to all uh, come good in the second half. Good running by Damian there. It's a shame. It's just that final ball. Breaking news, Diego Simeone to Man United, says Ball Jason. Yeah, yeah, of course it is. Come on, United, says Simran. Exactly. It's uh, Pogba seems to be trying more in the second half. It's just whether he can do enough. Rashford, his touch needs to be better. Come on. Pay the pass. It is a foul, but he could have given it to Martial. I think we need to feed Martial a bit more, Dan. I don't know what you think because... Yeah, um, he's not getting much. He's not getting a lot, really. And, you know, he did have a go. He had a go at Rashford as well in the first half and not sort of feeding him back as well he does need a bit because the thing with Martial he's good at running at the players he can be that build up so I think feed him a little bit as well on the left so 53rd minute you know we really need to start seeing some some direct play now sort of not now but sort of a minimum 665th minute Thank you. 
Memphis is warming up for those who missed it. Certainly the sort of game for Mem I mean, to be honest, if I was Memphis, I'd probably rather come in on now than, than have played the first half where nothing much has been going on. You know, you come on now, it's nil-nil, you score a goal and people will remember it. So it's a good opportunity yes. for him. I mean... That is the advantage of the Smalling and Bay uh, central partnership uh, personified there. They try to play a long ball. It's ahead of Bay, but Smalling just sweeps up because he's got the pace. We'll never get done for pace with Bay and Smalling as centre-backs. Um, the thing about Blind is, and I think Dan would rather Blind play, um, he's just a, a, such a good footballer from uh, from the back and he, he reads the game so well if you could combine blind and smalling you'd have the perfect for perfect center back because yeah it's like that's what they are to be fair they're, they're like a you know you have to like if you can just morph them together they'd be a fantastic player that would be a fantastic player it's the it's the pace and the height that blind will always be blind's weakness um yeah and smalling's weakness is he's just you know not very good on the ball yeah He's not, I mean, he's not bad, but he's, you know, he's not Daily Blind. Daily Blind can, you know... I like Daily Blind as a left-back. I think that's his best position. Um, yeah, but obviously, the problem you've got there is, uh, is Shaw. And Shaw, Shaw would and always sh well, should start before him. Yeah. I, um, but I think Blind should be a bench player. I do. I think he's a fantastic player, but I think he's a, he's a, he's a great utility player. Um, I... I I think it was Scholes who said he's, a, he's best as a defensive midfielder. I disagree. I just I know we we tried him as a defensive midfielder when we first signed him, um, and I think his lack of pace is more exposed as a defensive midfielder. I think as a defender, it's all about positional things. It's not referee again, not giving a foul. It's it's shocking it's refereeing. Matters like bewildered I think like many of us he goes to play a pass and he's tripped he's kicked and the ref's looking right at it should have gone to spec savers yeah the ref to be fair the ref's been shocking all game he's, Steve, and it, go on. it's true what you were saying because he was giving away a lot of fouls at first and then, and then obviously the crowd's got a bit on his back and he, he's just not giving some fouls now and then giving them do you know what I mean he's just handing them out willy and nilly, willy and nilly at the moment it's a bit it's all a bit strange. It's exactly what happened in the first half against PSV. They were dirty. The referee bottled it because he was against the parties and home crowd and then sure ended up with a, with a bad injury. I mean, it's the same again. Herrera plays a pass then and then number eight, after he's gone, is kicking him. It's, it's, I hate it. It's cowardly. People will get injured and the referee should should be protecting them and he isn't. Um, um, There's a good point. Steve Nesbitt says, why are we playing so deep? We need to push up. It's a good point. We've got pace in our back, especially our centre-back. So we shouldn't. We don't need to play so deep. Smalling's coming forward here. Rojo. Ooh. Be a throw in, I think. Yeah. I mean, our full-backs are not as good as, in an attacking sense as, as Luke Shaw and Valencia. Okay. Is Rashford with a bit of space? Pass one, like two sliding tackles. That's what it takes to stop Rashford. Good play, though. Yeah, Rashford's. You know, I think people expect. Well, I don't think they do. I think we're already expecting a lot from Rashford for um, an 18-year-old who uh, is from our youth setup, and he's playing away up front on his own against experienced centre-backs, and he's, he's doing fantastically well. Yeah, he is. He is. Oh, Martial. He'll win that. He's stronger. No, he hasn't won it. Goal kick. Yeah, free kick. Oh. Yeah, it's good. Yeah, people have to remember with Rashford. He's again. He's he's 18 years old. Do you know what I mean? So you have to cut him a bit of slack. But I, I think he's played well. Like, okay, his final ball's not been that great. But for an 18 year old in Manchester United, you're playing away in Europe for him. Yeah. 
and it's what is this his first this is his first debut as well of the season there's a worrying comment here which i'll throw to dan and everybody else that uh, i i think it's worrying to read it i just i don't i don't like it it's from lee carmen um thanks for the comment lee it's brave and uh if it's what you feel then that's absolutely fine we should have went all out to get pep no I just I don't think we can no. be think we can't be thinking like that now. We we didn't. We've got Jose and I think he's the right man. It's just going to take a bit of time. I could never it's like people who say I wish we'd gone and got Klopp. He's a Liverpool manager. I don't want anything to do with him now. We didn't get it. Oh, that's Rojo again. Just falling over and leaving it to Feyenoord. Kaut. And it's shot wide but Rojo personified then poor defending. But yeah, um, I, I I have no I don't understand that. I don't understand it. I suppose it's quite a passive way of looking at things that you know you might prefer to have Pep. But once they've gone to places like City and Liverpool, I, 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 that's it. I'm close shop. We've got what we've got. Oh, that's got to be a yellow. He's he's done about six fouls this number eight. If he doesn't book oh. him, it's an abs. Oh, he's not booked him. Absolutely shocking. How many fouls is the referee going to give? He's going to bring Zlatan on because. Someone needs an ass kicking. Looks like Memphis and Ibra's coming out at the same time, it looks like. We need Zlatan on because he'll, he'll, he'll start kicking some bottom big time. I think they're both coming on. Absolutely awful. I cannot believe how bad he is. Live comments anybody know who he is, where he's from? Sunday league in Turkey by the looks of it absolutely atrocious he's been he's been poor extremely poor and it's it's, it's it, it, it well it has to be I'm just thinking that it's so similar to the PSV game and how bad that referee was it can't be the same referee I don't think but it's not like they're Dutch referees because that's not how it works they can't be, it'd be real coincidence that they're both from the same country but it's the same sort of refereeing absolutely awful Fellaini's looking a bit uh, oh, agitated I think it's he wants to get I think on he's and doing throw a few. Three at once, mate. He's, do, he's, he's doing all three. Yeah, I don't blame him. Ashley Young as well. It'd be definitely Rashford coming off. Yeah. I don't agree with Martial coming off, and I think he will come off. I don't think Martial's done anything wrong. But it'll be, it will definitely be matter. Ooh. It'll be matter. Rashford and Martial, won't it? Yeah. I ain't got a problem with Ashley Young coming on. A few people saying Young's coming on. Um, the thing about Ashley Young, as I always say, is he, he does get what Manchester United's all about and he will put a shift in. Here we go. Let's have a look. Yep. Who it's going to be? Zlatan is definitely on for Rashford, as predicted. Substitute one. Memphis on for I would say Martial. Yeah. And Matter for Young will be surely. <laughs> Interesting to see what he's thinking about doing at the weekend. Oh, I think so. I think I might have lost Dan. You still there, Dan? Dan! Dan! If you love Alan Partridge, you'll love that. Uh, hopefully, he'll come back. Ibrit is shocking, says AJ. He's only been on a few seconds. Uh, we'll win now, says Daniel Crow. I think we will. I think, you know, a bit of injection of pace is a good thing. You know, worst case scenario, well, worst case scenario would be to lose, which I just don't think we deserve to lose. But if we get a draw here, it's not a bad result. It's been a really good workout. I, I want us to win it. I think we can win it. But it's it has been a really you know, a draw away in the Europa League. Is not bad. Not bad by any means.
Trying to get Dan back. I'm sure he'll come back. Maybe he's maybe he's had enough of United. A lot of a lot of men behind the ball. So obviously, it's going to be men. It's men's football. But there's a lot of men behind the ball for Feyenoord, and uh, they're not showing a lot of intent, apart from fouling intent. That's a good ball. Zlatan got up there. Oh, what's he done? A foul. How typical. And, the, and Zlatan sort of says to the ref, you mug, because he is a mug. It was not a foul. But uh, that's what we want to do. They want to mix it up and get tough. Zlatan, he did foul him good as well. he have been kicking a little 18-year-old all game. Now it's time to play against the man, you little bullies. But it's, packed, it's a packed out stadium, absolutely packed out. So, there is a relevance to that point in the fact that, you know, we are, we are playing away from home. He's back. I'm back. Sorry, I don't know why Skype tried to update itself. Yeah, mine did that yesterday. He's back in the room. Dan the man. Dan Mystic Dan. Your 4-1's fallen away, hasn't it? Dan did say 4-1 before the game. No, uh, we've still got time. We've still got we scored, time. We scored two in injury time in um in, in, in the final, in 99. <laughs> I don't think we're going to get four. Nah, I'm dreaming. Yeah, Rashford. Or Rashford. Um, Rojo's always going to give a foul away. And he did. Da -da -da. Da -da -da. I didn't see that last sub because I was trying to start the Skype. Who's Ashley Young coming for? Mata. So Mata, Martial, and uh, Rashford went off. And uh, cool. Zlatan Young, and obviously Memphis. Twenty-five minutes to go. I was just saying there before, Dan. It's not great, but um, we will. Uh, a draw away from home is not too bad. It's not too bad, but you know what it is. It's because it's, it's it's the way that it's the way that we lost last weekend and how poor that you know it wasn't the best team selection. I feel I feel like we have to get back to winning ways quickly because if we sort of lumber to a draw now. It makes that Watford game even huger, and we don't want to. We don't want to go into that thinking, having that on our back, thinking, "Crap, we, we need to win this." And we need to win it either way, but we don't want to start having to lose and then draw and then get a win. We need to get back to winning ways in this match for me. I'm starting to feel. I'm starting to agree with everybody else now. It has been a bit disjointed this uh, second half, and I don't think the three substitutions are going to make much of a difference. But we've not. We've never been in any in any danger in this game, um, and we will need to improve massively on Sunday against Watford, who scored four against West Ham last week, and will be a hundred. You know, if you think Feyenoord's been a bit intimidating, I don't think Watford will be as dirty, but they'll be up for it. They had a great result against the West Ham away. Um, and everybody raises it against United, so we'll need to be up for it. Um, and I totally agree with people. People, the players do need to up their game, um, especially in a, an attacking sense. It is still disjointed. Yeah, we are disjointed. Oh, hang on. It's, you know what? It's a bit. I'm not saying the players do it on purpose, but it's like everything they do. It always seems a bit half-assed, which seems like 75% of it. Do you know what I mean? Like, 
even them with that Pogba, that run for Pogba, he can do better. I know he's not a match fit, but like, I don't know, man. It just feels like there's still, it feels like there's still this gloom hanging over this club for a little. I don't, I don't know if it's just me or I've just noticed that even in the even in the games that we've won this season, it still feels like there's that, that dark, that dark shadow hanging over the club and and the way that we play. It says two great, two great talents are flopping at the club. Memphis and Pogba. Well, for for one, I mean Pogba's been there for how many how many games has he played now? Four, three. I wouldn't, I don't know. I wouldn't call that. That's not a flop for me. You got to see how he goes throughout the season. And again, Memphis. This well, is his first game know, of the season. Memphis has been playing under Van Hal, and we've given so many people like a second chance because they've been playing under the dictator that was Van Hal. Um, Memphis might not end up being good enough. You know, maybe he has got a bad attitude. Who knows? Uh, yeah. But he's got to be given an opportunity. I understand why people might think he won't end up being good enough, but the PSV are coming more and more into this now, which is a bit worrying. It's like the substitutions actually haven't... I think we were doing okay before the substitutions, and it's like the substitutions have made us a little bit worse, if that makes sense. Well, it should make sense. But I think it makes sense as well, because don't forget... We're just bringing on Zlatan Ibrahimovic. So obviously they're thinking, shit, let's go out together. So do you know what I mean? So they're going to be even more on our pace now in terms of in terms of slowing us down. Prince Vergata makes a very good point. Compare us to City right now and, my, and they are miles ahead. Well, they are, aren't they? They beat us in the derby. They won very convincingly last night. But And they've got a new manager. I, I suppose there's a lot of things that you can say are similar and, and why are things not working for us. But... They have made new signings, I agree. They have got a new manager, I agree. Um, but Rome's not built in a day. And I think where City are coming from and where we're coming from is very different Very different situations. You know, We've had three bad years. In that time, City have won the league. Um, I think they had a bad season last year. But... It's going to take time. It will take time. We've got good players. We've got the right manager. It will take time. I just think it's way, 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 way too early to start being negative about the manager, about the way we're playing. Um, and I think those who are, just stop a minute and think, am I letting myself carry on the crap of the last three years into this? Am I actually wiping the slate clean and giving a new manager and new players the right amount of time? You know, I remember when Van Hal first came in, he said, give me three months and it'll be fine. And it, I mean, obviously it wasn't, but I think there is a lot of truth in that. You've got to give a new manager some time. And I'll be, I'll be amazed. Yes, City have had a very good start to the season. I'll be amazed if City keep this up, you know, winning three or four nil. And, and well, they, to, to be honest, even before, before they played us, they weren't winning three or four nil. They were hanging on in games at 2-1 a lot. So, yeah, City have got maximum points and they're doing better than us at the moment because they beat us. But... There's a pass on there, and that's an absolutely dreadful pass by Memphis behind. But Damian with the cross. Zlatan just can't get quite onto it. But the thing with City, go back to that a little bit. Hang on a minute, let's wait and see if they do here. Rojo's just awful, isn't he? An absolute car crash. Argentinian Jones. <laughs> yeah, he is. So good point by Prince Vigata there. I'd rather have Pep, says Austin Arsenal. I don't agree with that, but, you know, everyone each to their own. KJ Goddam, how are we going to win the league? Playing like this. Again, I think it's too early to be making them sort of comments. Um, way, way too early. Way too early. Alpha Q, Manchester is blue at the moment. It's not, it'll always be red, mate. You've got no fans. I mean, when your manager's coming out begging for people to turn up to Champions League games, don't tell me <laughs> Manchester is blue. How can it be blue when you can't even get fans to come and watch a Champions League game? Uh, you've got a new manager, you spend loads of money, but you just can't buy any fans. So it doesn't matter. How, how can you ever say Manchester is blue when you haven't got any fans? Yeah, but, you know, when they get to the same amount of trophies that we have, then um, maybe we can have those sort of discussions. But 
you know, it's. I think no matter how much money they pump in it, how much the media love to um, R6 City and Pep, oh, they spent this much money on their training center, X, Y, and Z. Okay, so what? What does that mean? We're still, you just can't. You, you, you know what? When you think about it, you can spend all the money you want in the world on a team. And you, and you look at Chelsea as well for this example. You can't buy history. Do you know what I mean? So, and, that, and the history that we have, Good whether it be the Babes, Ferguson, whatever, you can't beat that. You can't buy that. No, I agree. I agree. Just watching the, just before we come back to that, Good Cross, it's just off the top of his head. But Zlatan's loving it. He's, he's a, such a bully. I love watching it. But. Uh, yeah, I was I was talking about this to somebody the other day. Actually, it's a really good point, Dan, because it's like you know you can Chelsea and City are the archetypal bought success clubs, but you cannot buy fans. It doesn't matter what you do, and I think City will pick up fans over the next few years if they're successful. But those sort of fans that you're going to pick up, they're mercenary fans as well. So if City don't win anything for three years because United do, or you know Chelsea then they'll go and support United or Chelsea because that's the, they're fair weather fans. If you want to fill a if you want to fill a stadium like they've got and I think the city stadium is 50 or 60,000 and they don't fill it because they haven't got 50 or 60,000 loyal supporters and you can't buy that. It's like if you're a multimillionaire and you wanted to go and buy Aston Villa, you could build an 80,000 seater stadium but you wouldn't fill it because the support isn't there. They haven't got that sort of support. Which is interesting with West Ham, who, you know, they've got a 55,000 seater capacity now and they are filling it because the support is there. Um, City don't have that support, so dream on. And United, well, we could have a 200,000 seater capacity and I think we'd get well over 100,000 there, so. I probably think we have more, you see. Just, just, the amount of fans that travel around the world, people said they're not real fans. Well, they are. Why, can't, why aren't they real fans? They travel around the world. They they share just as much passion as us, and they they go to Old Trafford and they love it. So I feel like we, we probably we probably could feel it if I'm honest with you. Yeah. You know, well, see see what you want to know about us. We are the biggest you know biggest sporting franchise in the world. People love and know Manchester United wherever you go at any corner of the globe. Yeah, and a lot of them come over just for match days and that. We, we, we could easily kill a uh, hundred thousand. I mean, Hoax Gaming Kicker says this guy's so biased. I'm not talking about football ability. We're not talking about football here. We're talking about facts. Man City can't fill their ground. Tell me that Man City can fill their ground. Give me the facts, the photos, whatever, and I will reassess what I'm saying. They can't fill their ground. They will never be able to be a big club because you can't <coughs> buy supporters. Sorry. I thought you were going to jump in. On. No, but, I thought um, my mic was on mute then. Sorry about that, guys. But, so... It's the same with Chelsea. They they haven't moved. Oh God, that's horrific from Memphis on the volley there. Wouldn't even be in a rugby goal. But Chelsea are the same. They bought success over a decade ago. They started buying success, and they're still a team that can challenge for the title. But they still haven't got a sixty thousand capacity stadium because they can't fill it. They've stayed in what what a forty thousand capacity stadium because they can't. There's there's no Abramovich could buy a hundred thousand. Seater, no problem. You can build it anywhere in London, no problem. They don't do it because they can't fill it. You can't buy support. You can't. They can't fill it. And people that say, "Oh, that they, they have, they have filled it before." Yeah, they have, but not on a consistent basis. You know, week in, week out. Oh no. One nil to Feyenoord. Totally and utterly unbelievable. Um, we'll watch it back. This is just going to be music to the ears of the haters because mm -hmm. I just don't know how we've lost this. Oh, it's, it's, it's like it's, it's, it's like PSV all over again. Let's be honest, it is like PSV all over again. It is, mate. It is. It's. I don't know. Watch the goal back so we can see who's at fault. Well, it comes down the left-hand side. Uh, Rojo out of position. He's actually probably oh, offside, to be he's fair. He's offside, isn't he? But fair um, enough. And it's unlucky. It's behind Darmian. It's a good... It's, it's a bit lucky. It's a bit lucky. You can't really... I don't know. I'd be interested to see what people on the live comments are saying who's, who they're blaming. 
it was slightly offside, Jerome, but you know. Are we going to get any refereeing decisions in this sort of game? Rojo is a liability. I think it sort of did start off with Rojo, to be fair. I just didn't want to jump on the, the bandwagon, but they've got something to defend now. God. The better team all night, says Jack Wilson. I don't think so. Is that a penalty? Surely Rojo gets to the ball first, and then the, re the goalkeeper hits him. Oh. I'll have to see the replay there. I need to see the replay, yeah, but looks to me like player gets there first and he's down injured Rojo there is a silver lining <laughs> every cloud done his back in at least he's got a spine that's proved the doubt is wrong yeah Rojo got the ball first there yeah it's not a penalty yeah it's not it, he we are, the ball into the keeper's hands yeah. definitely not a penalty at least we're honest. We are honest. You know, we could all be jumping up and down saying it's a penalty. It's not a penalty. Um, Lewis Roberts, Roberto says not a penalty. Grey Man says we are shit. Let's face it. I don't know. I, I don't know. I've, am I wearing red tinted glasses this season? I don't know, Dan. I just I don't detect that we are crap. I think in any game of football, I said it at half time. I can't see us losing, but that doesn't mean we won't lose because anything can happen in football. But on the balance of this game, we're not. The, we're not the worst team by any means. I would say a draw would have been fair because we haven't really had many chances, but um, that was a good chance. They took it. That will happen. I On the balance of football, yeah, we're not we're not a terrible side, but realistically, I'm not being funny, we, we are still lacking that bit, bit of oomph. And it's like, you know, it's a, it's a Europa League first game. We just lost against our local rivals. And we're now chasing it with nine minutes to go. I mean, we, we, we need to start showing them a bit of oomph now. We do. Like, irregardless if this is like, they're still going for fitness, we shouldn't be losing right now. And that's, that's being realistic. We shouldn't be. I think oomph is the right word because they are very physical and very up for it. And as we said, we're, we're constantly picking out Bay because he's up for it and showing a lot of passion. Well, the rest of the players need to do that as well because... Yes, you win games with football ability, but a lot of it's in the head and a lot of it's about effort. And um, regardless of the fact that PSV have been very, very dirty, mentally, a lot of our players just aren't putting enough effort. I mean, I think yeah. Schneidlin's been the invisible man. I really do. I don't know what people think about Schneidlin, but I'm... A, I'm, I'm really a... disappointed in him because I, I, I'm i one to always say he should be playing, he should be playing against, uh, ahead of Fellaini. And I'll, I'll, not be, I'll be funny, you know, he hasn't put in the performance. He's gone missing. You know, you think someone didn't get the chance to play at the Euros, hasn't played a lot this season. You should really think and go out and say, "Look, this is why I should be playing." And he he hasn't done it. He's not the player that he he's not the player that was at Southampton. Put it that way. No, he's been awful. And 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 we did say at the start of the game, this was an opportunity for people to um, step up and show that they should be in the team. And who has? Herrera, I think Herrera, again, has been good. But I don't has. think he'll, he won't play because obviously Rooney's got to play and he won't not play Pogba, so it'll be Rooney, Pogba and Fellaini. Um, I think Herrera's been really good. But... Nobody else. I mean, Memphis, Memphis is back well, defending yeah. there. Yeah, he did well, though, to be fair, to Memphis. Kim. That's decent. Long for United. Time is running out, folks. Time is running out. Zlatan became lazy, become lazy to play at Man United to show sign. You get all the haters on it, makes me laugh. I mean, Zlatan scored a goal nearly every game, so I'll take that any day of the week because no one's been doing that at United for a long time. Uh, Gung Shi bid for Matuidi in January. Yes, I think we need, you know, Schneidlin has, has missed the boat tonight massively. You've, you've got to grab the opportunity and he doesn't look fast enough. He's not fighting. He's not getting hold of the ball. He's not dictating. I think we've gone to... I don't know what we're playing at the moment, but Schneidlin's almost playing at centre-back. Maybe because Rojo was taking the free the throw-in. But We've not created any chances. There was a chance for Martial in the first half. But apart from that, we've not had any good chances. And what you've got to say about Feyenoord, to be fair, is that was a chance. It was a shot on goal. They scored. We've not created enough shots on goal, and that's how you win games. 
I personally think as well, Dan's had enough, I personally think as well the substitutions just didn't work. I, I thought Martial and Rashford um, and Mata have co were causing more problems to Feyenoord than Young, Memphis and Zlatan have. But maybe, hopefully he's got an eye on Watford and he's going to play Martial and Rashford, but I'm not 100% sure he will. Pogba does well to keep it on. Is it corner? No? No, goal kick. Time is a ticking. Who are we blaming, says Steve Nesbitt? It's a good point. The club. I blame the club because I just you know what it just as I keep saying as I said earlier on it still feels like we've got that dark cloud hanging over us it's, it's just we, we need to just shake it off we need to shake it off and get back to that that swagger that we have I'm not saying it's not not even about playing nice fancy football it's just having that swagger just, these players need to remember who they're playing for sometimes like, sometimes I think they forget on the pitch who they're actually representing the performances is just not good enough. Not good enough. We shouldn't we shouldn't be in the position where we have one and two. Hang on. Oh. Good block. I mean so this is oh. it. When it comes to effort, PSV are just chucking absolutely everything in and um that effort and design needs to come back. But Joe's you know, that that's the thing about Jose. He he's primed he's renowned for it, having having teams that with a you know good mentality, never say die. Um yeah. but we, as I keep saying as well, that's no reflection on Jose. These players, a lot of these players, have been playing under a dictator for a year, and you know maybe their heads are shot. Maybe they're never going to recover. Maybe they all need to go. But uh, maybe it's a bigger job than we even think because you can buy players like Zatan and Pogba, but if they've got seven or eight players around them and just not doing the business, then you won't win football games. I think Fight Feyenoord have been a prime example tonight of yeah they've been very dirty, but they've they've shown lots of desire. And um, that can get you a long way, as Leicester showed last year. It's not always about the players. If you haven't got that effort and desire, then you're going to struggle, aren't you? You are going to struggle. Yeah, but where does the blame lie? I well, I say you know I say the blame lies with the club. And if you, people say, what do you mean? I just feel like the club allowed this sort of mentality and actually to seep into the club over the last few years by just sitting on their hands how is that not a free kick and not um not making the key decisions when they need to look at that guy crying oh he wasn't i thought he was crying though. um but yeah just, you know it is what it is you know what every cloud has a silver lining i mean what, what's the worst thing that could happen they get knocked out of the Europa league yeah <laughs> do you know what i mean so just, just take it with a pinch of salt I do think the ref's been shocking him. They haven't shown it back there, but Pogba went on a run past about three players. It looked a blatant foul to me, and nothing was given, um, which has been a running theme. I think the referee has been dreadful, but you, you can't blame a referee for not winning a football game. You've got to find a way to do it. And um, I think Dan was right with the oomph comment. Um, if you're not getting the free kicks, uh, you've got to fight back. And uh, I don't think there's been enough fights in it. I think Rojo's a shocking player. I really do. I know Dan was saying it at the start. He is the Argentinian Phil Jones. Um, he's a shocking player. Uh, I think Schneidlin's been the invisible man. Um, I don't think Smalling's done much wrong. I don't think Darmian's done much wrong. It's not because of them that we're going to lose the game. It's not you know, in, a, in an attacking sense. Maybe a, maybe a little bit. Oh. I mean, that free kick's dreadful. And that's from Memphis. You know, goodbye. You, you, you'd be lucky to be on the bench at the weekend because it's just not good enough. You've got to grab the opportunity. There's an opportunity there. Schneiderlin's not been good enough. Memphis hasn't. We want them to succeed, but we can't lie and wear red tinted glasses about it. These are two players who may not be on the bench on Sunday because there's players to come back. It's hard to get on the United bench. It doesn't mean the 11 on the pitch are playing very well, but you've got to force your way in. You're given, what, 20 minutes, half an hour? You've got to force your way in. Schneidlin's had 90 minutes. Oh, no. I don't know. There's oh, not no. A mass you know what? I, I agree. There's not a massive difference between Van Hal and now. There isn't a massive difference because the results aren't much different and... The football's not clicking. The football's better. It's not as you know. Maybe we kept the ball more under Van Hal, but it was boring. 
Um, I don't want this to happen though. We don't want this to happen. We've lost on Saturday. We lose again. You know what's going to happen. The press are going to be on it like a car bonnet and they love to get on to Jose anyway. And we don't want, you know, Jose's career at Chelsea ended up bad. And they'll start going, oh, has he lost it, this, that and the other. And it puts pressure onto the manager. Uh, I'd love us to score a goal, obviously, because I want United to score goals. But I don't want what's going to start happening to happen, which is going to pressure put on the manager when he's you know he's new to the role it's a massive job there's a there's a lot wrong with Manchester biggest United biggest job for football yeah and there's a lot and wrong we've not been near the title in three yeah. years I mean Rojo was going to hit that on the volley from 40 yards just bad bad decision making is a big thing as well we, we make bad, we make a lot of bad decisions like passing to Rojo free kick there again just fucking... yeah, I was going to say not only is it the biggest job in football, you've got to remember, he's taken over this job after the crap that we've had for the last few years. He's not in the same position as Moyes when he took over from a title-winning team. Do you know what I mean? We ain't got long left. Um, some people asking, are you doing a match reaction show? I probably will. I might set it up now just so it's there because I, I want to have an evening. Um, but let's wait and see what happens with this first because we might we might get a winner. Zlatan's going to take it anyway. Oh, Ooh. not bad Straight attempt. to the keeper. Straight to the keeper. Is that Brad Jones in goal for them? It is, yeah. Liverpool reject. How many minutes left? There's only a couple of minutes left in it, folks. Um, I think we're looking at our second loss under Jose, which is obviously massively disappointing. Um, I mean, what's your thoughts, Dan? Oh, I'm just seeing this. Dan. Was, you know what? Yeah, it's, nah, mate, I was, I was just looking to see if that was going to be a booking because if it was, it would have been a red card. Um, it's disappointing, mate, if I'm honest with you. Um, I thought I, I said on on on, on the watch along the other day, I did, we we couldn't we couldn't lose that game against City, at, at, at worst draw, we lost, saying, we lost it, and then you know, the reaction was from the players from the managers that they were going to fix it, and oh come on, come on, oh. Oh, corner, yeah, yeah corner, and again we we we're, we're losing like. Two games in a row, and as you said, you know what our press are like. They are going to be all over it. Um, oh. There he is. Who took that corner? Another corner? No, he's called the red. He's called, he's called it. Uh, so we lose, we lose. 1 0. It's, it, it's an odd feeling to lose it because I just never felt we were losing that game. Um, I, I feel sorry. I feel sorry for United. I feel sorry for Jose because it's like you can lose any game of football. You can lose any game of football. And we all know that. But did we deserve to lose it? No. <laughs> did we deserve to win it? No, but I don't think we deserve to lose it. I think it's just one of those games where, yeah, you, you can lose it. Of course you can lose it. We all know that. But I, I, I find that question, who do you blame for it, very, very pertinent, really, because I, I just don't know who you blame for it. Um, I don't know whether you ever grasped who you would blame for it. I certainly don't blame the manager. Uh, I, I think one of the things I did remember saying in, in the summer was that if we don't start doing it this year, then the players need to start looking at themselves. And I think they do, uh, without doubt. 
need to start looking at themselves because it's just not it's not good enough is it it's not good enough that we didn't really create any chances and that was always the problem that we had under under um van hal we used to moan about that quite a lot so mm -hmm. yeah i think the players need to take a long hard look at themselves that's where i'm going down i don't know about you they do they do mate because you know you, you can get away with the excuse of oh well boys is a crap manager and Lou Van Gaal's outdated, da -da -da -da, he's dinosaur. Jose Mourinho now that, that we're talking about, this guy is a world-class manager. That's st still today is a world-class manager. And the players seem to be stuck in this same psyche. No, and how long are we going to keep blaming LVG? Okay, what's done is done now. Get over it. Yeah, they need to really pick themselves up now. We had about, you know, Herrera, by they... They play well. They, you know, they, they they show some pride with that with that badge on their chest. But the other players, even Pogba, I don't want to start stating he's a new signing, but it's just like, it's like this, it's just so half ass. It's such a half ass effort, and you can see it. You can see the potential that they've got if they just show again. I think it's going to be the word of the night now. Oomph. But if they if they did show that, then uh, it'd be a different story, I think. Um, if you were going to give a man of the match, Dan, who would you go with? Um, Herrera, because. You know, I think Boy played amazing, but the, the, not amazing. He played, he played great. Um, but the, the sad thing about Herrera is he played so good, we lost, and he'll probably be out of the team next week. Well, on, on at the weekend. So I, that, you know, I want to give him something because Boy would probably be back in the team because he's sent him back. But you know, sad for Herrera, but he, he's probably going to be out, and that's and that's that's the reality. Yeah, I think you're right. I, I said that a few minutes ago, didn't I? I thought Herrera was easily a, a man of the match, probably up there with Bay. But I don't expect him to be playing on, on the weekend. I think uh, Rooney will come back in, unfortunately. Yep, absolutely. And I think he'll keep playing Pogba because, obviously, Pogba's his signing. Um, I thought Pogba was slightly better in the second half, but I understand that the I understand the concerns. Of course, I do. Um, you, you'd be mad not to. But um, thanks for coming on, Dan. I'm I am no just right, setting well. up um, a live comment street, a live match reaction, which I'll do because I know. People like to have like a bullet point thing, but I've really appreciated having Dan on as per usual. Hopefully, are you available for Sunday, Dan? Can you put yeah. yourself through it again? I'll be back in. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah, I'm back in the seat Sunday. If I can last 90 minutes with, with the way that we're not showing this effort, I don't know. But yeah, I'll be back here Sunday, mate. All right. Okay, it's um, it's a what well, I'm trying to think. It's a la, It's a 12 o'clock kickoff on the weekend, yeah, so, so we're we'll going to join us for that. Um, I'm going to jump over to the other live match reaction, which will probably go up live in about a minute or so. Uh, cool. Give my thoughts then. Thanks, everybody, for watching on the live comments. Another fantastic watch-along. Really enjoyed it. We'll be back at 11 o'clock on Sunday with a watch-along. We'll have previews for Watford live tomorrow night at half past eight. Lots of stuff going on. Um, applaud you. It's difficult. I'm going to keep my thoughts from a match reaction, which I'll do in a moment. But um, we are united. The United Stand, and thanks everybody for watching. And if you're not, if you're new, subscribe, keep getting involved, and you'll get notifications of all our live stuff. But big shout out, thanks to Dan, and thanks to all you lot. Um, not the great results, but I think we've got to stick together, folks. Let me get my earpiece back in. Yeah, I think we've got to stick together, and uh, I'll see you all very soon. See you.